the smoke radio for the masses. Headline of this news, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. To Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, everybody. How you doing? Fade to Black, bespoke radio for the masses. Yeah, man. <laughs> Today's Wednesday, April 5th, 95 days into the new year, just 270 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California, and I would like to welcome everybody listening, everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States, hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black. For KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? Fired up? Fired up. Let's get her done. I've been waiting for this show for a long time. I wanted to spring this one on you. Tonight, very special guest, Anil Pandey, is here. We're going to have a discussion on everything. We called the show Quantum Simulation, and there's a lot of reasons for that. And last week, Anil and I, we were kicking around titles for the show, and it came down to this. But you know, it's more about a show of enlightenment, uh, possibly alternate realities, how to test them, how to get to them, how to prove them, and some of the... Some of the things here on earth that are telling us things and i'm gonna spring all of this on you okay it's gonna be an an amazing conversation very smart guy take notes you're gonna watch this show a couple of times and i get that okay you're gonna listen to this show you can watch it a couple of times if you want but uh it's gonna it's gonna be one of those shows okay so do take notes um, Anil is a very, very, very smart guy, talented guy. He's a musician too. So he's got a lot, a lot of background to him. But, uh, when it comes to computers, computer science code, um, and what is behind those things and trying to get to, uh, another, or, or, is this a simulation right now, right now that we are in? So that's part of it. Okay, so just get ready. It's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll have uh, Anil here in a few minutes, and we'll get this thing started. Tomorrow night is another Fader Night with John Rappaport, and there's no more fake newsroom live. The call-in number is 323-825-5045. Follow me on Twitter, at Radio. And uh, I just, uh, who posted this? Was it Allison? Look at all these dancers. Is this is this the... Uh... <laughs> ah... So we've got the bunker cam, studio dome, and tweet deck, and a notepad and a pencil all in one shot. That is pretty cool. Is that a is that a laptop cooling stand? That's pretty cool too as well. Look at that. Got the big monitor in the background. Got my fat mug on the screen. That's that's just too cool. If you want to see that picture, just go right now to Twitter. That's pretty cool. That makes me feel good. It means it means somebody out there, and I think it's Allison and 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 C Colo are are the ones that are listening to and taking notes. Get a notepad ready. All right, follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. Hashtag F two B is the sandbox, and uh, take notes. 
Everything is fade to black. J Church Radio. You can go now, follow, like, and subscribe. Go over to the website and do that. If you have any questions or comments, and obviously Mark Tarana does over in Australia. He has posted 150 questions in Twitter for tonight's show. I have no idea. Now, this is what I was thinking, Mark, and I know you're listening, is I should take these questions and ask you. I think I'm going to get all of these questions saved. Rita, we need to save all of Mark's questions. And then Thursday, have Mark call in, and I'll field these questions right back at him because I have a feeling he knows. He needs somebody like Anil to confirm, right? That that I think that's what he wants. He wants confirmation. Any questions or comments during the show, hashtag F2BQ. Email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Don't forget, subscribe to the podcast. Over 600 archive shows, custom apps, Apple, Android, all platforms, just $2 a month. Go to the Google Store. Go to iTunes. Search Fade to Black. Download the app. Go to Libsyn. Uh, just sign up and subscribe. It's $2 a month. Very simple. We update it every single day. Also, become a member. Uh, you know, And becoming a member, becoming a fade or not, is also very easy. Go to our website, click on the membership area, and choose your poison. It's that simple. We have four different levels. You can go from free to a full-blown Game Changer membership. All right? We have drawings every single month. We give away cool stuff. And so just just come over and, and become a fade or not. And with the downloads there, our entire library is all commercial-free fade to black. And you can download it. Play it back in your player and just do your thing with it. Put it on your cell phone. Put it on your 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 tablet, right? All commercial-free MP3s. All right, so there you go. Become a member. All of the new members, if you're watching me right now in the bunker cam, welcome. Welcome to everybody that has become a member of the family. You also get an email to me, a private email. And anybody that has used it, and I get those emails every single day, they will tell you, I write back. I respond. I read to all of. I read them all. I read them all. Great ideas too uh, that have come through there uh, with guests and and so forth and comments. So whatever whatever you want to do, it's all right there in our membership area. Don't forget, contact in the desert is coming up next month. It is oh man, it's just over a month away, May nineteenth through the twenty second in Joshua Tree, California. Um, you know, we had Stephen Greer on the show this week, and we were talking about the magic of Joshua Tree. I don't know what it is. Last night, uh, Jack Harry was on the show, and I think we all recognize, you know, going back, if you remember, uh, George Van Tassel and all the conversations we've had about Giant Rock and the Integratron and the magic, the, the pure magic of Joshua Tree. It is an amazing place to hold, you know, the biggest UFO conference in the country, if not the world, every single year. But it's a magical place where things happen. All right. So the event this year is May 19th through the 22nd. Tickets and info over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. All right. And this year, I mean, George Norrie's there every year. This year, uh, Graham Hancock, Jacques Vallée is going to be there this year. So is Robert Baval. So is Robert Schock. How cool is that? David Wilcock, Corey Good, Jim Mars, Giorgio is going to be there. Richard Dolan, Andrew Collins, Linda Moulton Howe, Whitley Strieber, David Serrata, Mike Barra, Melinda Leslie is going to be doing her night vision. And another 30 or 40 researchers and authors are going to be there. Friday night, we're going to broadcast Fade to Black Live. Saturday night, I'll be hosting the Forbidden Archaeology panel. And my panelists this year are Graham Hancock, Robert Baval, Robert Schock, Andrew Collins, Brian Forrester, and Carl Lauerberger. All right, that's underneath the stars, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. in the amphitheater. And uh, and I'm going to run around and hang out with everybody, and maybe I'll get a chance to uh, introduce uh, some people there. So just come hang out. And, of course, we have our little uh, after-party, after-show things and the night vision. We're going to be doing that this year. So come and hang out with us. All the tickets and info that you need, food, lodging, everything is over at the Contact in the Desert website, which you can get to at jimmychurchradio.com. Let's get this show cracking. Today, happy birthday to Christopher Reed. Yeah, man. The kid, <laughs> the kid 
of kid and play. You remember Christopher Reed? Remember that? You remember that hair? You remember that hair? I wanted that hair. I couldn't have it. He's 53 years old today. And I, I, I'll say it. I, I don't care what anybody says. I loved House Party. The first one. Also, happy birthday today. Our dead guy's birthday today. Betty Davis. 1908 to 1989, died at the age of 81. You know the films of human bondage, all about Eve, you know, and those are great films, don't get me wrong, but it, it was her role in Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. That sealed it for me. She was truly great. Um, I don't know how... What, when, where, I saw that movie for the first time, but I was very young, whatever happened to Baby Jane. And that movie messed with me. The ending, one of the great endings in all of Hollywood. It was like a real ending, right, on the beach. But um, that that movie changed me. It really, really did. That's one one Hollywood moment where I can say, it affected me for my entire life. I was probably, oh, man, I was probably seven years old, you know, and it's on TV, black and white, you know, and you're at that age where, you know, you just kind of start watching it and you get sucked in and you watch the entire thing to the end, you know, and uh, it just messed with me. And I've seen it so many times since. Just an amazing film. Well, in 1989, when uh, she passed away, she traveled to Spain where she was on She had cancer, breast cancer, uh, dealt with that, apparently beat it for a number of years, about 10 years. And, uh, and it just came back and it came uh, and she was trying to fight it. So she goes to Spain where she was honored at a film festival, but during her visit, she just, it, it, it got her, it grabbed her and she deteriorated quickly. And she was too weak to make the long journey back to the United States. So she ended up traveling to France. And then she just died on October 6th in France in 1989. Happy birthday, Betty Davis. On this day in history, 1994. Yeah, I have to do this. Kurt Cobain commits suicide. His body was discovered inside his home in Seattle, Washington, three days after his death by Gary Smith, who was an electrician, and he was there to install a security system on this day, 1994. A lot of, lot of mystery behind that death, too. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy, but officially, it's suicide. Fader fact. Oh, I went and watched Eric today. Awakening Man posted a Pearl Jam video, and he's like, dude, man, I can't believe it's, you know, it was for a live. I think it was on Saturday Night Live 25 years ago. And kind of weird that that was posted, you know, the day of Kurt Cobain's suicide. And it was, you know, it was pretty weird to go back and watch, watch Pearl Jam and to think how fresh today, you know, a live sounds. I'm talking about Pearl Jam, that song. Um, everything, 10, that album, oh, man. But it's hard to believe that it was 25 years ago. Put it in context. Let's go to 1975. You're hanging out at your house, playing your Kiss records in your bedroom really loud, and your parents are telling you to turn it down, right? And then you got to hear your mom's speech. Back when we were listening to music, and then so back up, <laughs> and you're thinking, man, my parents are so old. And you think about the music that they were listening to 20 years ago before that. Whatever it is, 20 years. So 1975. 1955? <laughs> what were they listening to in 1955? That was before Elvis Presley, right? So think about that today when you're talking to your kids and you play them Pearl Jam, which is 25 years old. I guarantee you, no matter how cool you think you are, they listen to Pearl Jam, and it sounds old. <laughs> it might as well be Bing Crosby. Think about that. Just, just, just think about that. But, man, Pearl Jam. 
You would think that Pearl Jam today, that, that if that album was released today, wouldn't they just be, you know, would they would, would that album shoot to number one? Would the young kids today would they would they get it? You know, or is it just old people's music? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Eric just said the good old days. How can it be, man? How can it be? Smells like teen spirit, right? The good old days. But, you know, it just is. All right. Fader fact. Fearing a German invasion. One of my heroes, Alan Turing. Right? The Turing test. We're going to be talking computers most of the evening tonight. So I thought I'd share this with you. Alan Turing. In 1940, you know, he's the dude, man. He's just about won World War II, if you think about it, right? Alan Turing. So in 1940, he convert, He was fearing a German invasion, right? Well, actually, they kind of did invade uh, the UK. But he was fearing a German invasion. So in 1940, he converted all of his assets into silver ingots and burying, buried them somewhere in Buckinghamshire. And he spent the rest of his life trying to find them. He forgot what he did, where he buried them. And you know what? He never found them. He never did. And that's a fader fact. One of the smartest guys in the world, right? Can't remember that. Tonight, very special guest, Anil Pandey. Now, we're going to discuss We're going to discuss computers. We're going to discuss quantum mechanics, quantum theory, and simulation. Are you a simulation right now? Are you, are you a simu? Are, are you ones and zeros? Are you a qubit or not tonight? We're going to find out tomorrow night's another fader night with John Rappaport and there's no more fake newsroom live. The call in number is three, two, three, eight, two, five, five, zero, four, five. All right. Um, it happened today. Now it was a couple of months ago. And I was going off, you know, and, and I know that I have said, and I said this on Inauguration Day, leading up to the election, I was so upset about our choices of uh, candidates, Hillary and Trump, right? Just just upset that, that it came down to having to make that fatal blow. We had to make a choice, but we did. And on Inauguration Day, we did a very cool special event here on Fade to Black, and rode through the inauguration with all of you together. And I said at the end, uh, I said, look, you know, that's our guy. And we need to support him. We need to now forget about everything else. And as Americans, we need to get together and, uh, and, and, and work through this like we always do. Right. And that's, that's still my opinion. It hasn't changed, but Steve Bannon, I had said a couple of months ago that, we, in our circle, right, in in our little fringe conspiracy, the world is not what it seems circle that we have here. We are here trying to figure out what is really going on, right? And that's why we have Anil on the show tonight. But we've been trying to figure that out. Now, just imagine for a second that we win, right? We win. And we get a candidate or whatever, and we take over the White House, and I said then, and I really meant, do we really want that? Do we want to take it that far? No, we don't. We don't. We just want to be heard. And more than that, we just want to figure out what's going on. Right? I, I, I don't need to convince seven and a half billion people in the world that, that we're tripping. I don't, I don't need to do that. That's not a victory. But getting somebody that is out there with some pretty whack ideas into the White House and advising the president, now we've got a problem. And I'm serious about this. I just didn't feel like this was something that we really wanted to mess with. And having Steve Bannon in there, I, I just didn't think it was a good thing. I didn't think it was a good idea. His, some of his things, you know, and having him in Trump's ear you know, hey, man, you know, Donald, come here. You know, they're listening to us right now in the Oval Office. They can hear us, man. They've got they've got holographic satellites that are that are beaming into our brains right now. And they're telling me what to say. And, and you know, we you know, we don't need that. Right. <laughs> it just scares me. I just want level heads in there. Right. OK. But Trump was elected. But today 
and I said this a couple of months ago, Steve Bannon's on on limited time. There's just no way that he's going to last. It, it just can't happen. Well, today, and especially that whole National Security Council, the NSC. Well, it happened. Today, uh, President Donald Trump has reorganized the NSC. And his chief strategist, Steve Bannon, is no longer on the principals committee. And the memo, which was uh, dated for yesterday, says this. In the, in the memo, dated April 4th, which refers to reorganizing the National Security Council and updating the list of officials who sit on its principals committee, the document shows no role for Bannon and a reduced role for Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossert. Director of National Intelligence Dan Coates and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Marine General Joseph Dumford, are again considered regular attendees of the Principals Committee. Okay, that's a good thing. In addition to Trump and Vice President Pence, the regular attendees will be the Secretaries of State, Treasury, Defense, Energy, Homeland Security, and of course, the Attorney General. The National and Homeland Security Advisors, the U.S. Envoy to the United Nations, as well as the CIA director, in addition to the Joint Chiefs Chair and the DNI. All right? It's like wipe your brow. Whoo! Right? And I know you feel this. <laughs> it's just, it's a good thing. The White House Chief of Staff Counsel and Deputy Counsel for National Security and the Director of Office Management and Budget are also invited to attend any NSC meeting. In January, Bannon was positioned at the NSC as the White House Chief Strategist. And that's what it said in the memo. A post created by Trump for the former Breitbart News executive. There is no mention of Bannon's office in the new memo. Completely void. The, the, the trip on this, uh, um, I just want to say this. The trip on this is... If you go back and just watch Stanley Kubrick's film, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, How I Learned to Love the Bomb. If you go back and watch that and you see the craziness that is around that table, right? And you've always got one or two conspiracy dudes that are just tripping. You know, at, at, at moments of, of serious, serious, serious national security. It's good to have somebody in your ear that's giving you different opinions, and if that's what Trump wants, he's entitled to that, and Steve Bannon is welcome. I, I get that. You need alternate opinions. But when the chips are down and decisions are made, that's where you... No, no. <laughs> I, just, I just don't agree with it. The other night, I want to change gears here a little bit, but again, everything is always related. The other night I mentioned something... Uh, you see a lot in television and film, which, uh, and I spend a lot of time talking about this, which is the ability, either with a security agency or, or private company, to pull down something on the web, right? To shut down a server, to take down a website, you know, all with a click of a mouse. What, they said this? This is posted? Take them down. Who's posting that? Pull it down. You know, and jump into some and hack somebody's and just, just, you know, do whatever you want. Well, apparently you just can't do that. Because if you could, then ISIS wouldn't have a presence on Twitter, right? <laughs> they wouldn't have Facebook pages. They wouldn't have their own websites. You know, we would just go and take them down. The second they're up, they're down. Second they're up, they're down. They wouldn't have any email. They wouldn't have anything. They would have a couple of encoded uh, uh, text messaging services on their cell phone. And, and, and again, how are their, how do they even have cell phones, right? Because we see this time and time again, how close to reality it is, what WikiLeaks is posting about the CIA and the NSA and, and that they have the ability to do whatever they want whenever they want. It just doesn't seem to be the case because if it was, there would be no WikiLeaks, would there? It's it, it just no matter how many redundant servers you have running around on, you know, and VPNs and everything else, that's it shouldn't be the case. According to WikiLeaks own documents and what Hollywood has painted for us. Well, today it happened again. 
Today, an ISIS-linked group of hackers has released a kill list of 8,786 names and addresses from people in the U.S. and the United Kingdom calling for lone wolf attacks on the targets in this crazy video that was posted online. Now, the hackers, known as the United Cyber Caliphate, the UCC, orders those watching the video to kill them wherever you find them. Now, in a posting Sunday night on Telegram, a private messaging app, the group first warned that a release of the names was imminent. About 10 minutes later, the hackers... Now, it, you know, our own NSA, CIA, F, F, all of this electronic surveillance, we were given a 10-minute warning that it was coming. And then 10 minutes later, the hackers posted the actual list, which included names of seemingly random individuals, primarily from the United States and the United Kingdom. And more than 7,000 of those names right here in the United States. The video is just under six minutes long, and it begins with a warning for the United States. And I'm quoting here. We have a message to the people of the U.S. And most importantly, your President Trump. Right? Know that we continue to wage war against you. Know that your counterattacks only make us stronger. The UCC will start a new step in this war against you. Now, security experts are currently warning to determine the primary source of the list. Where did it come from? Which includes individual phone numbers and emails. They are trying to determine where the list came from and and identify the common theme among all of those listed. Now, this is this is not cool, right? Obviously. But it got posted. And our own cybersecurity experts here, not only with the agencies, but at the private level, were all warned that this was going to happen in 10 minutes. And it still happened. Now, why? It, look, you, you take down the servers and you, you do this, but the list is already out and people have done this. I, I understand that, right? But why can't you just shut it down immediately? Let the list gets out. Let's say, but just to let them know that they that this kind of uh, outlet cannot be done. But we don't do it. And as far as I know, they're still up and running. It's very concerning for me. You know, and with everything that WikiLeaks has said about how strong and powerful and 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 Snowden told us that it's just it, it's a it's a, the click of a mouse away. They can do whatever they want. But yet this still happens. I don't get it. And that's why you listen to Fade to Black tonight. Anil Pandy, we are going to do it all. Get your pens and pencils ready, kids. Pad of paper. Phone the neighbors. Let them know what's going on. They're going to want to be here. You're going to want to listen to the show a few times. It's going to be an amazing conversation. I'll take it slow. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, the planet. Sit right there. I'll be right back with the Neil Pandy. Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black... You create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. 
The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go back, Lee Teppy. Hi, folks. Let's wind the clocks back 60 years. Food was different. Food provided health and nutrition, and using supplements was minimal. Unfortunately, now we have chemicals, GMOs, herbicides, and pesticides that can be quite lethal in the name of our food supply and, of course, the ever-loving dollar. Supplementing our diets can be very important to stay healthy. Cleansing from daily intruders to the body might be critical. Live strong and take charge. Log on to GetTheTea.com. Our herbal tea is a great way to cleanse from intruders. Our supplements is a great way to maintain and improve your health. When your health is not up to par, go to GetTheTea.com. No GMOs, no fillers, and organic. And very helpful in keeping you at the top of your game. Life is too short to feel, uh, you know what I mean. Stay in the game, at the top of your game, with GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Again, GetTheTea.com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Klutzke with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fade or Nots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Bass, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'm the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. Follow me right now on Twitter, at JChurchRadio. Use hashtag F2B to get into the sandbox. Enjoy the conversation tonight. We'll bust two, three, four thousand tweets during the show. And you just kind of want to hang out and see what's going on. We don't bite. Tonight, very special guest, Anil Pandey, is here. Tomorrow night is another fader night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live, followed by Open Lines. The call-in number is 323-825-5045. Anil Pandey was born on Manhattan Island in New York City. He has lived in Nashville, Tennessee for the last 28 years, where he started a computer software company in 1992, sold it eight years later with 65 employees to Information Holdings, Inc., and in November 2000, shortly before the dot-com crash. Transcender was founded on the transhumanistic concept of transcending the DNA physical carrier in favor of artificial life extension into transistorized bodies. He believes that simulation theory is the best model to operate from during the transition. He has also played bass in the rock band, Darko Blow, has written a song, Dream Girl, a transcender starship that can be found in our links. You can just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the links, go check out the song. It is actually uh, pretty amazing, pretty cool. You know, I'm a musician, I produced a lot of stuff, and I got to tell you, go check it out. He has written a soon-to-be-released software game program for mobile devices that purports to test whether one bit of data can be transmitted non-locally. He believes that the sun is living. His website is transcender.com, and I would like to welcome, for the first time to Fade to Black, Anil Pandey. Anil, good evening, sir. Welcome. Well, it's great to be here. It's great to have you here. Now, okay, Anil, we're going to start here. With every first-time guest, we do the same thing, which is our first-time guest disclaimer. 
Next time you're on the show, you won't get it. But tonight you do. Okay. And the disclaimer is this. It's just you and I sitting on my couch having a conversation as friends. Where we start, we start. Where we end, we end. But we're going to end as friends. You ready to go? Sounds good. Okay. And Neil, don't sound so excited. Pump it up. <laughs> <laughs> Just mess with you. Um, what uh, I, We're going to start here tonight because we have so much to go through, and there is a lot in this concept. And we need to start with the sun, and, and that's what we're going to do. But let's back up before that, okay? Um, I want to know a little bit about how you grew up. Did you always have this fascination with the world around us and wonder about what is going on? Um, certainly the questions of a simulation or a simulated reality, I'm not sure if you had those when you were five years old. I kind of did. But, you know, what what happened in your life where you had this epiphany to start to go into this direction? Tell me about that. Well, I I guess it it has a lot to do with um, me growing up and being a big Star Trek fan. Um, <clears throat> and you know, the there's there's two concepts in, in Star Trek that that I'm kind of following up on. And and one would be um, the the character Lieutenant Commander Data, and uh, he is basically an android that that has done what um, I, I think eventually. Um, we're going to do, and that is transcend the the DNA physical carrier, meaning that uh, our cultural line of evolution, our language, our beliefs, um, it, it can be transferred into a, a non-DNA based form, a transistorized form in, in silicon. That is, DNA does not have a monopoly on on living or consciousness. Um, so, so that's like the first concept from uh star trek and then the other one is the uh the starship um that can be built to you know travel you know to other galaxy you know around the galaxy and uh so those are those are the the, the two kind of concepts and and i guess kind of what what follows from there is you know in in order for those to come about what what type of model are are we going to implement um you know are we going to follow to to make those things a, a reality you know thousands of years from now and uh you know definitely the the matrix was the 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 big um breakthrough in in as far as my thinking as far as what we're living in i mean i think that and and the 13th floor is is another really good movie yeah um that explains exactly what what's going on here i think the 13th floor if it comes closest to to what's actually happening here you know what's interesting is and thank you for when you're when you're so honest with that because there's no telling how many great physicists, scientists, code writers, theorists today are doing what they're doing because they just friggin' watched Star Trek, right? And it causes them to think outside of the box, right? And it's really true. And if you go back to 1968, the original versions of Star Trek with with some of the technology, the simple stuff that is around us today – was in concept was just in this TV series in 1968, but it causes people to, to think wonder and dream and, and maybe not accept the status quo. And when I first saw the matrix and then you bring that up, the uh, first time I saw the matrix, I thought it was a great movie. I didn't get it. The second or third time I saw it, I remember sitting back going, Holy crap. There's this movie really actually has a message in it. Right? It really flipped me out and it got so deep on me so quick. It went from just being some cool, flashy Hollywood movie with some really neat special effects to something that I thought was a game changing reality for all of us where we need to step back and maybe start to question things. And, and it's just funny that you say it in those terms because I hear you and I totally get what you're saying. Right. And they, they say that, uh, science fiction writers turn out to be the best prophets, you know, when compared, you know, with other prophets like Nostradamus or, or, or characters like that, that, that science fiction writers get it right uh, more than more than anyone else. Yeah, it's true. 
It's true. Arthur C. Clarke, Heinlein, Gene Roddenberry, any one of those cats uh, were more accurate than <laughs> people that claim to be professionals at it, right? It's, it's really kind of funny. Um, okay, right. well, that's that's interesting. Okay, so then you went, uh, just really quickly and briefly, um, you started a software company. Uh, you can tell us a little bit about that, and then... Uh, 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 you know, sold it during the dot com uh, uh, push that happened and its bubble and and crash. Um, tell me about that and what did you learn um, through that period about the capabilities of computers and their systems and maybe even their shortfalls. Right. Um, yeah. What happened there was you know I was I was getting out of uh, uh, school and I was trying to figure out okay well what am I going to do here and. Uh, the the i what what was happening is that microsoft was starting starting up a certification program on uh microsoft windows and so what you would do is you would you would go into one of their testing centers you would sit down and and answer a bunch of questions if you if you got enough of them right they would they would pass you and then you would be able to use the microsoft logo on your business cards and and use that to to promote yourself as being microsoft certified so what I did is I went in and I took all the exams, and then when I got back, I made up sample questions that were similar to what you would see when you go in to take the actual exam, and then I gave you explanations and references and and, and everything like that. And, and I also gave a money back if you don't pass guarantee, which uh, very few people took us up on that. I think we had more people return the product because they ordered the wrong thing than that they didn't pass the exam. and so. That was that was back in in 1992, and um, so every time Microsoft would release a new programming language or operating system or database, um, I'd go in, take the exams, and then write sample questions. And so that that continued um, from 92 until around 2000, and uh, at that point, I, we had about 65 employees, and we're we're just churning out these these certification products and and uh, it seemed to me that it was the the PE ratios on the stocks were like through the roof it I, I kind of sensed that there that that we were in a bubble and so I started looking out to to try to sell the company and uh, we ended up finding somebody um, that that bought it they were traded on the New York Stock Exchange information holdings was their name and so we sold out to them and in that was in November of uh, 2000 and then uh, about 10 months later, 9-11 hit, and the whole dot-com um, crash occurred. And, um, you know, so I, I, I got out in, right in time for that. And um, so that, that's, that's basically that story. And, and kind of what got me interested in, in, in Microsoft was... I guess a, a kind of a, a, a simulation that I was running in my mind, a, a thought experiment as to you know what what is the landscape around here going to look like in say 200 years, and what came to mind is that that we will have gotten out of these DNA based bodies and have our consciousness in in a in a transistorized type of body like a lieutenant commander data like an android and uh so from that i i kind of focused on well what do i need to be doing now what 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 is the the pathway there and of course microsoft came up and the certification program that they were doing and so that's kind of what gave me a, a a hook into how to proceed in that direction Got you. Uh, sorry, uh, I know that you're listening to something cranking in the background here, and I can't stop it. I was I was just merely clicking through, and I know it feeds through your your headphone feed, but uh, it's off now. Um, so the 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 strength of traditional computing systems today versus. Um, uh, other alternatives out there, such as you know, obviously the the quantum computing, uh, which is uh, going to be the the next boom. Certainly, um, what are the advantages, and what's the disadvantage of 
uh, of uh, Intel chip technology and that transistor versus the quantum chipset? Well, the I, I guess the, the quantum chipset uses what's known as a qubit, and and that bit can has a has a probability assigned to it, you know, of being in one state or the other, and it's in neither. And then um, when it's um, observed, that that wave function uh, collapses, and I, I guess it has to do something with. Um, um, being able to evaluate all the future prob- probabilities of something happen happening at one time, um, so it it would be much quicker than the the, the current uh, transistors that that go you know one um, operation at a time. Yeah, uh, uh, in in still, real time, still very much right. Go ahead. I said in real time. It's just either on or off right now. It's not doing anything else but that. It either has that state or one state or the other. Right, right. Um, and and that's still very much in its in its infancy. Um, but but either way, um, I, I think that it 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 is possible to to replicate consciousness um, in in a non DNA based form. I don't think that that you have to have DNA. And so that, that's the, that's the vector that we're on here to, to transfer our, or or replicate our consciousness in, in, in non DNA based bodies. Now, before we uh, continue, let's start with, because I just wanted that established right now. I want that in the back of everybody's uh, brain here. Let's start with the sun. You believe that the sun is living, and I think that most of our audience would agree, but they may not have the view of what you are about to say. And and I want to say this to our audience. Uh, we've had many people on this show that have, uh, for another reason, and not, not for what you're about to lay on us, but have had the same conclusions about the sun coming from different sources um, that the sun is living, that the sun could possibly be a portal, that there is a, there is um, an entrance there, that there is the possibility of uh, it communicating it with us. And it has been for a long time. It is telling us things and we need to pay attention. And so th- the audience is used to that part of it. So let's start there. Why do you believe the sun is a living thing? Well, uh, first off, um, all uh, everything that occurs here on Earth, all the actions, all the life and everything like that, we're all operating on recycled energy from the sun. Um, every, you know, that the, the sun is, is our, our source of, um, of our energy. And, and also at one point we were all stardust. I mean, every, you know, so everything that we are right now ultimately came from the sun. And, uh, it, it's sort of like, I mean, if, if I were to like illustrate like a, a, a cartoon, um, you know, imagine that that you have two two red blood cells um, in in the cartoon, and they're you know in in an artery, and uh, you know they they're born into existence. They live for thirty days. They they carry oxygen from the lungs to the tissues and back and forth. And you know, if you can imagine two of them wondering, hey, you know, I wonder whether this being that we're inside here is is intelligent. And you know, obviously the answer would be yes. And I mean, I think we're sort of in that same kind of situation. I mean, we don't really have the means to have a, a direct conversation with with the sun um, and, and find that out. But um, the, the the evidence really points to to the fact that that since that brought us all into being, it it, it seems to follow that that it would be an intelligent as as opposed to just being you know a big ball of fire in the sky. And if we look at it in those terms, um, does the sun, is the sun aware of us and our current state? Um, it, it might be, I would, I would hope so. Um, 
I mean, I don't, I don't really know what it, it, its thought processes are, are, are like, or what the, the, um, uh, if it, if it can sense us on an individual basis or anything like that. But it, it certainly, um, I'm, I'm sure it's aware of the earth, and, and, and there's definitely a very uh, strong relationship between the, the, the sun and the earth, and there's all kinds of magnetic fields going back and forth between them, and, and communication there. Um, so, um, I, I would think so. And, and only because, and when we're dealing with, uh, a universal consciousness and things at the atomic level, certainly the, uh, the evidence of us being this bright blue planet that is alive and is growing. And there's, you know, people here, um, that every time it, may burp or have some type of uh, cosmic event that it directly affects the 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 people here and and the families and the life and so forth because it has the power to to end all but it also has the power to create everything at the same time right right and and we know back in in 1859 there was what was called a carrington event it was a huge solar storm and uh you know basically the 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 telegraph uh lines got got so heated from the induced um electrical charge that that some of them caught on fire and of course being 1859 uh, you know there there weren't a lot of electronics um, that that people had that that would be affected and of course biological systems really are not affected by by those kinds of waves but if um if if another solar storm like that came um it it would be much more serious um and and I do think that the sun is is aware of of you know what it would be doing if that if that were to happen again and um so a, a lot of this is it, it is focused on what do we need to be doing in case the sun is conscious and could do something like that you know are we doing something constructive here and and i think certainly the the internet um is is a huge uh benefit to the planet um it, it's basically the the brain of the planet you know everyone's connected we're all like little you know neurons that have cell phones that are are connected to the the, the wired networks going around the the planet so the the earth sort of has its own consciousness uh, we're getting to the point now where if if something from outer space some debris were to come in our direction you know we could possibly um, defend ourselves, you know, send something up there to push it out of the way. And so from, you know, from a, an observer's standpoint, looking at the earth, you know, to see the earth sending something up and pushing something away, um, it, it would give the appearance, oh, well, that that's the earth doing that. So the, the earth has, has developed quite a bit um, in, especially, you know, since the, the transistor came on the scene and so the so i guess the question is you know what where where does the sun stand in all of this and and that i i think you can figure that out by by going into sympathy with the sun sort of like putting yourself in its place if it if you know what i mean yeah yeah i think you might want to back off your microphone just a little bit just a little bit we're getting some pops you know some explosives um well and that being said if the same uh, cosmic solar storm happened that today, that happened in 1859, with our dependence on the Internet, which goes through everything, right? The infrastructure, obviously the Internet, but now it's television and, and communications and cell phones and uh, uh, our water systems, our food delivery systems. Everything is dependent and connected on the Internet. If that solar storm happened today... Are we back in the dark ages? It quite possibly, um, if if the sun were to to let out a, a coronal mass ejection, say the size of, of of Jupiter, and and that cloud of charged particles made its way here and and lingered around the Earth for you know a few weeks, and and we we didn't have electrical power. Well, then you know all our 
our food supplies are shutting down. You can't pump gasoline. There's, um, you know, anything electronic is not going to work. And so, yeah, that, that, that's hard to imagine, uh, a uh, worse uh, catastrophe than something like that happening. Um, we're going to head towards a break here in a couple of minutes, and I want to set up the next part of this discussion, which is going to be the Georgia Guidestones. Now, what I would like from you is your opinion about what the Georgia Guidestones are, what they represent, because we've discussed it many times on this show. I've got you know, a hundred different opinions. Um, and I don't think, I don't think we know any more today or understand any more today than when they were first constructed. So let's start there. What are the Georgia Guidestones and what are they trying to tell us? Well, it's a, it's a monument that, that someone built in, in Georgia and most likely it was, it was built by the, the, the owners of the, uh, the the stone quarry to, I guess, draw you know to for publicity for their their company or something like that, and and it has a lot of concepts on you know written as far as like how how they think the world should be, and uh, one of, one of the the things on there is to uh, maintain the population at 500 million people, and so that. That's uh, a lot more than what we have now. We have, I guess, over seven billion. So that that would be a huge reduction in the population. Um, and so it kind of gets you wondering. I mean, I would I would kind of maybe view it as as a warning um, that uh, we we need to um, make sure something like that doesn't happen. And what what could that be? I mean, it could be another solar storm. I mean, that if 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 we had that kind of a scenario where you know a cloud of charged particles lingered around the the, the planet for for weeks, um, that could bring about you know exactly what they're talking about. If if five hundred million people survived uh, a solar storm like that, where we go from seven and a half billion to five hundred million, who would the survivors be? You know, is it the elite or is it is it just the guys that weren't living in cities that were lucky enough to not be able to afford a house in a city? And and now they turn out, to, you know, it's like the weak shall inherit the earth. Who would those 500 million survivors be in something like that? Yeah, I, I think that's right. I mean, the, the, the people in cities aren't aren't going to be able to survive. They're they're not going to be able to get get food and, and everything like that. Whereas, you know, people that are accustomed to living in the wilderness and living off the land, those those are the ones that are going to be able to survive that. Yeah, I think it would really be funny, uh, you know, the the uh, people of Africa and Central and South America that have, you know, that that maybe not. Uh, they don't have the exposure to technology and everything else that we do today, right? Well, it turns out that that's exactly what would keep them alive in this event because they wouldn't depend on electricity. They wouldn't depend on those things that we depend on today. Our guest tonight, Anil Pandey. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. The title of the show is Quantum Simulation, but it's much more than that. Stay tuned. More with Anil right after this short break. Stay with us. Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Pat Healy, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. Well, the... <laughs> <laughs> 
We are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dum loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full range boom boxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this, it's amazing. It's just 129 bucks and use the promo code JCRTWS and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to jimmychurchradio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tappy. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies. I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. I went from being able to work 14, 16 hours a day with no problem to where I could barely walk a block to the store. I went on to the phytonutrients about six months ago, and within a couple of months, my medical doctor had cut my prescriptions down in a a little bit smaller dosage. The next time I went back, a month later, I walked into the doctor's office, and he says, my gosh, what's happened to you? You don't even look like the same person. He looked at my legs, and the swelling had gone down. My blood pressure was down. The venous stasis ulcers that I had had on my legs for the last four or five years because of the poor circulation were all healed, and I'm feeling far better. The new challenge will allow you to receive two months of Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies free. And we'll even ship them to you free. Call now for details. Call 1-800-2468-751 or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code TALK. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. Our guest tonight, Anil Pandey. You can follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Anil's links are over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. You can click. And continuing the conversation, Anil, you write, We theorize that the structure of the universe allows us to commence certain operations which transcend our space-time continuum for the purpose of avoiding another solar storm. What do you mean by that? Well, that, that sort of operates on, on the assumption that the sun is conscious and is aware of us and, and does know what's going on, and it, and it does have control over, you know, when and where it, it sends another um, coronal mass ejection. And so the question becomes, well, what do we do to, to, to get there um, to, to that, 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 that point where it's, the sun is not going to want to send another solar storm our way? And so, in, so that kind of going down that pathway leads you to imagine, well, if you were the sun, you know, what would you want? And, and obviously, we know someday that the sun is going to run out of fuel. It might be billions of years from now. Um, but still, nevertheless, it, it's going to happen. So the, the, the theory is, is that the sun should be concerned about running out of fuel. And so what can we do uh, to, to help with that? And, and the answer would be to, to build a starship to be able to go out into the universe and bring back more hydrogen supplies to refuel it. Um, so so that's, that's the theory there on that. And, well, how would this be done? Um, I know it's a logistical thing, but going out and, is I, I mean, isn't hydrogen everywhere? Would we have to leave the solar system? Could we just go to Jupiter? I don't know. Um, n- no, you'd have to find, you know, I, I mean, it, it could be that you go to um, 
a place where there's other, you know, stars being born and, and haul one here that way. Now, of course, this, again, we have billions of years to do this, but the, the, the good news is that once we transfer, you know, or replicate our consciousness into non-DNA based entities, you know, our bodies will be computerized. They can be backed up. So the lifespan will be indefinite. So whether it takes a million or a billion years, that, that won't really matter. We'll still be there to do it. So, and I, I think that we're probably getting pretty close to this technology uh, today. Um, in your estimation, how close are we to downloading our consciousness onto a USB hard drive? Well, I, I think what's going to happen with that is that <clears throat> each person that, that decides that they want to continue their their existence on, on this planet, um, say when they become maybe like a hundred or whatever, that they would construct a, an, an Android body, um, which, which I'm calling a transcender a transcender, like with the ER at the end means one who, so a transcender is one who transcends and what are they transcending? They're transcending DNA. So this, this person will build an Android like, commander data but it will look like them and it will just kind of continue on acting and and being that person and um if if you say live another 40 or 50 years that the technology in 40 or 50 years is probably such that that most people cannot tell the difference between that 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 you've been replaced by you know a, a, a a a robot um, you know, certainly, uh, you could construct something that would at least fool your pets, you know, could it fool your mother, you know, could somebody like really question it enough to figure out, well, okay, that, that's not, that, that's not you, but that, that transcender will, will take on your, your legal identity and, and continue indefinitely. Yeah, it, I think that that conquers a lot of issues, I and mean, I've theorized about that myself many, many times. And I had uh, Michio Kaku on the show a few years ago when he said, "You know, I'm t- I'm telling you right now, they can already download, and they are downloading consciousness right now on the computers." And it was a pretty dramatic thing for him to say, but it opens up that idea. You know, how do you overcome the physical body? Right? That's that's the whole trip. But the other part of it is is how do we power how do we build and where do we come up with the technology uh for the starship itself to get out there and back that's another question that has to be answered what do you have for that well i i think they had it right in star trek with the uss enterprise uh what they used was a a matter antimatter reaction that was mediated by dilithium crystals which are you know, of course, fictional. Um, so, so the key starship is, of course, how to power it, and that the power source is antimatter. And uh, basically, based you know, based on um, the work I've been doing and 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 looking at this, um, the we're one of the things that that we we're, we're going to have access to by by going into sympathy with the sun and and we already have the the, the instructions on how to do this is to build a, a diode that would be an antimatter particle beam emitting diode so we're talking about an electrical component you know like a transistor that takes you know a voltage uh, uses a voltage um, difference to to spew off a, a stream of of antimatter, which can be collected and, and stored and and used to to power the the starship. So that's that's the power supply. Well, let, let's take this a step further. Uh, my first question is, where are these instructions coming from? Well, it <clears throat> basically it it's. Um, I guess you would call it a Gedanken experiment, a thought experiment um, in, in that, you know, how, you know, what, what is the next step that, that we have to take to, to build this thing? And what it, what it boils down to is um, the, the orbit 
of the planet Eris. And Eris is the furthest planet from the sun. It, it has a, an orbital period of 560 years. So it takes 560 years to, to make an orbit um, around the sun. Uh, Pluto's is about 230 years. So if, if you take the, the year 2000 as sort of your pivot point, and, and you say that, well, 560 years in the future, one Eris orbit, uh, we're, we're going to have starships by then. That, that's, the, that's the target date to have this uh, diode built, which is quite a while in the future. So now you take that 2000, go back exactly 560 years. So you're in the year 1440. And that is the year that Gutenberg invented the printing press. Interesting. And so if you were to imagine having a conversation with Mr. Gutenberg in 1440 and you describe to him, you know, a laser printer, um, his question would be, well, how do I build one of those? How do I build a laser printer? In a com- which obviously for, to, to make that work, you, you have to have a computer and a monitor and, and that whole kind of setup. And of course, that's all, that's all based on transistors, which are based on electricity. And, and so, and, but they're really, if you look at a printing press and you look at a, a computer with a laser printer, they, they pretty much do the same thing. I mean, you, in, instead of like inserting the, the wooden uh, typefaces, um, you know, you, you clack at a keyboard and, you know, instead of putting, pulling down the lever, you, you hit print. And, but it, it, it does about the same thing. And so the, the question is, um, you know, how would you explain, you know, explaining to, to, to someone now how to build this diode that emits antimatter um, is, is analogous to explaining to, to Gutenberg, um, well, this is how you, you, you construct a, a, a laser printer. And so, and, and that's, that's going to be, that's going to be kind of, Difficult. I mean, it it can be done. I mean, we we have laser printers here now. You can take them apart. There's people that know how to build these things, um, so it, it it could be explained to him. But they hadn't invented elect or they hadn't discovered electricity for for another 300 years. I mean, I guess you'd have to move forward into the the 1700s with with Ben Franklin uh, flying his kite in the rain and a lightning storm and, and, and figuring out this thing called electricity. So that's still 300 years off. Um, so that, that is, that's kind of what we're up against. And, and the, the, <laughs> the instructions at, at this point from, from going in to, to, to sympathy with the sun and, and, and opening up, you know, that data pipeline, because obviously the, when it, when it comes to, uh, power and electricity and high energy physics and things like that. Um, uh, uh, of all the the individuals out there, if if the the, the sun is uh, the the number one expert on on things like that, I mean that that's what it's doing all day. Well, we um, have uh, we have anti matter being created at uh, different sites around the world right now. I, I talk about it all the time on this show. It is certainly being done. The containment of uh, of antimatter is a whole other situation itself. It can't come in contact with anything, so it has to be suspended in an absolute vacuum at certain temperatures and and so forth. Because if it makes contact with anything, including its containment vessel, all hell breaks loose. How do we address that with this diode? Uh, by creating antimatter inside of the diode where I guess action comes out of the other end of the diode, right? Whether you're calling it fuel or, or um, uh, the, the mode of transportation and an energy source to move this ship forward, how do, how do we overcome that inside of the diode without having it imploding on itself? 
Well, that that's going to 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 be a a, a technology that that's going to be developed, and that that's why I'm I'm thinking that it's going to be more like 500 years uh, be, before we we can contain it and put in starships and have starships flying around because you know that the, the you know that question is sort of like Gutenberg asking you know so on this transistor here exactly how are we going to you know do this or that and it it's not it, it it's hard to bring that into very to a very clear focus however um the the instructions to build this diode um are are actually pretty clear in in the sense that that they're going to come in steps and and the first step uh to build this diode is to go back to the gutenberg example and and ask okay if you were to go back, if you were to be sent back in time to the days of Gutenberg and, you know, you had unlimited resources and, and let's say you're going to live, you know, your lifespan is not an issue. Um, what man, you know, if you, and you can bring back all the information you want, um, as long as it's like in, in a text format, a book or, or, or whatever, what, what would you write down in that so that when you get there, you you can build this thing? The uh, is there is there a way for us to theorize to as well through software to to see how this would actually uh, what's the word I want to use? Well, a simulation, some type of computer program that we can take a look at and analyze. Uh, you know, the amount of energy coming out of this diode. And that it would ultimately be safe and usable. Um, that that's still down the line. The 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 in, the instructions at this point in in order to build this diode are to get a handle on how to build a transistor. Meaning, you know, any any in order to conduct this simulation that that you're talking about for this diode. The, the first thing that needs to be done is whoever's designing that simulation or involved in it, or whether it's a computer or whatever, it has to have a, a full working knowledge at, at its fingertips of exactly how a transistor is built, how a laser printer is built, and, and, and all that has to be kind of loaded up into memory. And, and then from that point, we'll we'll get another, you know, go into sympathy with the sun again and, and get the next instruction set um, on the pathway to, to building this diode. Um, but, but you can't, you can't like really jump ahead of, of that first step of, of getting your, your programming environment installed. Um, you, you have to load your, your operating system and your, your, your software uh, to the computer first and say, okay, we got everything set here. Now, what do we do? But that the first step of actually writing up these, um, you know, this, this manual on how to build a, uh, a laser printer and a word processor and a computer and everything like that. I mean, the, the, the information is, is really out there, but to put it in a format where, you know, you could actually, do it when you got there, which means, you know, going out, gathering up sand, uh, re, you know, refining it into silicon and then, you know, doping it, you know, with um, gallium to make it into a semiconductor and and constructing a transistor out of that. And then once you had the transistor, you know, making that into a computer. And, and so once that's all laid out, then you can kind of start thinking about, okay, well, what's the next step to build this diode? And something comes to mind here as I'm, I'm putting all of this together and thinking about this. When we're talking about an Android type of body with uh, uh, DNA in place, either artificial or real, um, uploading consciousness and ourselves onto this so we could potentially not deal with our our meat body, right? And, 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 and that... Uh, the problems that occur there certainly to travel to the stars. If um, if consciousness is running around the universe and inhabiting our bodies, is it possible that that other reality that is out there 
could consciousness then make a choice and maybe not even go into our own bodies and take over an android body? And I'm not, this is where science fiction comes into play and into reality, where maybe if I'm out there and I have a choice, reincarnation, what have you, and I wanted to, to come back, maybe I wouldn't want this, you know, this human body. Maybe I would want an android body. Is that a possibility? Um, I, I guess if you're going to make, the, now, when when you say me, are are you talking about your ego or what, what are me, you talking about? Me, me, me. Our brains are electric, right? That's a series of of you know our brains are electricity, and there are those out there that theorize you know when the electricity stops and our bodies shut down, consciousness is over, right? That 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 our brain is creating consciousness. Then there's others out there. And you and I have talked about this, that, you know, consciousness is everywhere. And, and we are here right now in the now, now, but if before I was born and, and I occupied this body, maybe if there was an Android (laughs) sitting there and I had a choice, is it possible for, for those beings to take over an android and never even go through the human aspect? Well, I mean, it, it, as far as what you are, it, you know, you've got an ego, you have a super ego, you have an id, you have a shadow, you have a persona. And what we're replicating here in, in the android body is your persona. You know, so you're, you know, that that is your how you your your interface with the outside world is your persona so that is um what we're going to try to rebuild here now i i guess the question is is there some like a a, a soul that that leaves the body and then uh floats around out there for a while and then when it when it sees like another body it 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 you're saying that it, it could inhabit that that body like in reincarnation? Why not? If 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 that capability is there for you to do it, what would stop a, a soul from doing it? Right. Well, you know, I would I would guess that that if um there is this this soul that that moves from 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 body to body you know, one to another, one human to another, lifetime after lifetime, that, uh, you know, if, if that's true, then maybe it can inhabit an, an android body. I, you know, that, that kind of remains to be seen. Um, it's kind of hard to picture how that would really happen because what, what's happening in, in, in the android is it, it's running a program and it's trying to emulate what you were like. So, you know, it's going to have your voice. It's going to have your as many of your mannerisms as, as you have it. It's going to have as much of your your you, as much as you can capture on videotape and, and, and save on your hard drive. I mean, those are going to be its memories. So if somebody asks you a question, it, it can refer, you know, to, to those videos that are, are saved and, and they'll all be indexed. And and so. um you know, it, it, it's just kind of running an emulation. So I don't know exactly how the if, if if these souls go from body to body. I'm not really sure how that that works, and if they could interface with something electronic. Um, so I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm saying that that that's like the ultimate. That's like the danger. You know, it, it, you're you're sitting there, and you've got a an unoccupied android, right? But he's ready to go. He's built, he's charged up and then uh-huh. his eyes pop uh-huh. open and it's, <laughs> it's, it's not what you intended. Yeah. I, I would be very surprised to see that happen. Now <laughs> you also, you also write that, uh, that, uh, that our reality and and you and I were talking about this last week, and I find this fascinating because right now Silicon Valley, uh, some of the brightest, best, not only uh, CEOs and corporate heads and those rich dudes, but engineers down at the coding level are all talking about what you and I are doing right now, right? We're sitting here talking live on the radio. This is the simulation. 
that quite possibly <laughs> we are we are the simulation we are in effect the matrix we are the ones and zeros and the reality is actually something else now this is uh this is as 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 heinlein and as crazy as that sounds this is seriously being discussed right now in scientific and computer circles isn't it Right. It, all, all the evidence is is pointing to that being the, the best model of our reality, that we are in a simulation. Now, when we talk about, you know, when, when I first heard that term, I guess Nick Bostrom, you know, first came up with 2000, in 2003, you know, saying that, you know, statistically, um, if if we eventually evolve to the point where we can run other simulations like say second life you know where or, or like a video game where there are avatars that are, are playing against each other and they develop consciousness inside of these games and have their own lives and agendas and, and whatnot that that he said that statistically we're probably in 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 one of those uh, but now that has really kind of sunk in that it, it maybe that's not quite exactly what's going on, but but that that when he calls what we're in now a simulation, what he means is that from base reality, which I'll, I would also call a complex reality, um, we look like a simulation. In, in the sense that if, if, if I look at Second Life and there's an avatar in there and, and he becomes conscious and starts asking me questions, hey, well, what am I doing here? Uh, what, what's this all about? Um, you know, I'm going to say, well, you're in a simulation. And, and it, it, it's not real because, you know, if I flip this power switch off, you know, poof, you're all gone. You don't, you know, I mean, un until that power comes back on, you know, you, you don't really exist anymore. So it, it's, uh, it, it, second life is a, a simulation and, and all the evidence now is pointing to the, the, the theory that our space time con continuum is emergent. It's, it's emerging out of this, this other dimension. And what is cluing us in that that's what's going on is is these quantum level of effects like quantum entanglement action at a distance einstein called it you know spooky action at a distance and then on top of that you have the whole uh situation where we have these synchronicities happening these coincidences that that are connected by by meaning that that they don't appear to have any kind of cause and effect basis, but yet there's a, a connection there. And so the, the synchronicities on top of the quantum entanglement are, are, are the main two things that, that are cluing us into the fact that, that we, we came from somewhere. Now, uh, we're going to take a break, and this is the perfect setup right here. It's a perfect break. Uh, when we come back, we need to talk about locality, non-locality, and uh, exactly uh, what you're referring to here. As some of us out there in this audience, it's, it's, it's been a subject that has been discussed a lot over the years, but I think it's also very, very, very misunderstood. Our guest tonight, Anil Pandey. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. We'll be back right, right after this. More with Anil Pandey. Stay with us. We listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk. Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzanel, tiburón. Y los invito para que escuchen mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Hey there. Quick question for you. Would you be okay with more energy, more endurance, thicker, healthier hair, a better mood, reduced appearance of wrinkles, improved sleep, improved blood pressure and cholesterol profiles? 
improved vision, improved memory? Okay then. Well now, have you heard of Nature's Youth RSF? It's from the anti-aging experts at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. See, at Nature's Youth, they understand exactly what it means to provide top quality health products. And Nature's Youth customers not only improve their health, they know they're also providing their body with the right nourishment to maintain that peak performance and fight the aging process. If health, wellness, and nutrition are what you desire, choose Nature's Youth RSF. I did. You see, you're going to get older. It's just up to you how you feel when you get there. Get started today. Nature's Youth RSF. Simple to use, simple to order. Go to naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. I was introduced to this remarkable product, Balance of Nature Fruits and Veggies, and to say it's amazing is an understatement. Balance of Nature provides the nutrients of 9 to 11 servings of 31 different whole ripened fruits and veggies per day, and the cost to the consumer for 9 to 11 servings is about 22 cents per serving, as opposed to over a dollar in the store. Balance of Nature Fruits and Veggies helps boost the immune system by over 720%, and they also provide a health coach for you at no charge to guide you with any questions you may have. And you can also visit their website for testimonials on balanceofnature.com. So take steps to give yourself better overall health and call them now, toll free, at 800-246-8751. That's 800-246-8751 or go to balanceofnature.com right now. Make sure to let them know you heard it here by using promo code TALK for a special discount. That's balanceofnature.com and use promo code TALK. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Anil Pandey. And this portion of the show is brought to you by Life Change Tea. Go right now by clicking on the banners over at jimmychurchradio.com. It'll take you to straight, it's straight to getthetea.com. Just mention Jimmy when you order, either online or over the phone, and you're going to get yourself free shipping. And don't forget about the new soap, right? We want to get those kids in faded black shirts. All right, and Neil, um, when we talk about th- this, it gets to be a, a little bit complex, but I think it's it can be described in a simple way. When we're talking about causality, uh, non locality, dualistic, they, when we start to get into that, it sounds a little bit strange, but it is it's proven scientific theory now, isn't it? Right, right. That there, there are these effects, um, and and they they use the word now non-local, meaning and, and local refers to this universe. <laughs> okay, so a non-local effect would be say action at a distance. They'll they'll take two particles, um, they'll become quantumly entangled, and if one is placed say a light year away. When when the spin changes on one, the the spin on the other one changes simultaneously, which um, should violate Einstein's theory of relativity because you would assume that if one is changing as, at the same time as the other, that that some kind of signal is is traveling faster than the speed of light. And but if you if you follow simulation theory well that explains that that explains how that would work and how do uh, how do the, the synchronicity side of things come into play well i think that <clears throat> synchronicities are you know that that term was first um coined by 
Carl Jung back in the the fifties, and uh, it it refers to meaningful coincidences. There there are these two events that are are, are coinciding and and they're connecting connected through meaning and. I think we've all had these, you know, experiences where um, we have a premonition, or we we know something that 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 we we shouldn't know, or you know, you're, you're thinking about somebody and then you run into them, and and there's just not a you, you, there's just not a causal explanation for it. It's just that it, it's too much to to just say that it it's just out of randomness. The odds of things like that happening. Are, are so slim and and I think we've all had experiences that and uh, like that and and that's kind of what clues us in I would call those synchronicities are are manifestations of of non-local phenomena that that they're they're not connected by uh cause and effect rather they're just connected by meaning or sympathy could they be connected from another reality could it be us knowing what's going on, you know, and it's directly connected right back to us and here, <coughs> excuse me, and it's happening on that no, non-local uh, atomic level. And if it's happening at the atomic level, it happens at every level. It would happen with our bodies itself. And if we are in a simulation on this side and synchronicities are happening, is it because of a connection directly, non-locally, between that other reality? Yeah, that that's exactly right. What's happening is, like, let's say that you're you're uh, an avatar in a in a in a computer simulation, and you're on one side of a wall, and and there's something on the other side of a wall in the simulation that you want to see. Um. Now, like in our reality, we we could look and see, you know, go go around the wall and look and see what's there, and and that the transmission of that information would could could not occur faster than the speed of light. However, if you're in that that simulation, if instead of accessing, you know, looking in that direction, if you if you know, you're you're on the microprocessor. You're running on the microprocessor. The microprocessor is sitting right next to the memory. If you were to look at those memory locations that are rendering, you know, that object on the other side of the wall that you want to see, and you just peek at those memory locations, that can occur faster than than the speed of light. It, it it's right there. So that that would explain, you know, simulation theory would explain um, these types of, of synchronicities and, and non-local phenomena. It, it's basically activity that is being accessed, you know, from within the, the, the memory of, of whatever, you know, is, is running us. Um, and, and I would assume it has um, characteristics like a microprocessor and RAM and, and things like that. So that can be accessed instantly. I have a friend that has a simulated reality, artificial reality company here in Los Angeles. <clears throat> when I say a friend, I mean, this is somebody that uh, I'm friends with before he started the company. And his technology is so far, I mean, it, it it's serious business. You go and look at 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 the worlds that he has created. I mean, I'm from not only uh, things that we know, like Los Angeles or Palm Springs, where you would absolutely want. It. This isn't like Google Earth, right? This is a whole nother situation. Down to the detail level, it is absolutely perfect. And if I was living on a chip, and I was in his simulation. There would be no way I wouldn't know the difference between what I think is, you know, right <laughs> reality here and and what is there. What would the difference be to me? Would I even care? I mean, everything would be the same, wouldn't it? And what about and, and with that, what about smell and taste and and touch and, and, and things? Well, it'd, it'd kind of be like the the matrix all over again. Um, you know, you'd have to decide. You know, somebody might approach you and say, "You want to take the red pill or the blue pill to get out?" Or um, so, yeah. I mean, that that's 
it, it would, I think the Matrix movie is, is kind of what that would be like. That kind of illustrates the scenario you're talking about. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget Agent Smith. Or was it Agent? No, it wasn't Agent Smith. It was what's his name when he was eating the steak, right? I can see the steak. The steak is juicy, right? <laughs> I taste it, but I know it's not real. And, and that's that's the trippy part, because if we have the ability to download us right now, like I said, on a USB drive, and we jump into a video game or some type of artificial reality, well, then we could exist there. And would it be okay? Would we have fun? Would we... Would we uh, would we want to leave? Would it be uh, an area that we didn't enjoy, or would it just absolutely simulate where we are now? And we probably wouldn't care. Well, I, I mean, I think in in that scenario you're, that you're spelling out, what would be inside there would be an emulation of you. That it it would you, you know you would try to design this this being inside there that is going to pass a Turing test. Um, that that that's really you. That that you can basically fool everybody else into thinking that it's you. Um, you know, by replicating your persona. Um, you know, as far as like what goes on, you know, on the insides, it, it it's kind of hard to say whether that's going to emerge into the same kind of consciousness that 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 we experience moment to moment, but. You know what really what what really matters is how your present you know how your presentation is to the rest of the world whether you interact the same way as you know you would you know out here or you can act the same way in there. If you had the opportunity right now, right? If you had the opportunity to go simulation full on sim, would you do it? <laughs> to like enter into live like on a another... chip yeah live on a chip would you do it no nah, i don't think so <laughs> um i mean would i still be out here would i would i would this body out here well, and be? see that's that's the other question and uh, that's exactly where i'm going if you start to split in other words you take my persona you take your persona and it goes on to an android now what's the deal What's the deal here? Are you guys thinking at the exact same time? Or now is your persona, you know, is there actually in effect two of you? And would it, would it, would it make different decisions? Or are you permanently connected at the quantum level as well? You know, that's, that's the big deal. You yeah, just well, asked. I, I mean, to, to, yeah, I mean, to really pull this, this off where, where you're in another person, I mean, they're, they're going to have to, you know, for number one, assume your legal identity, which means, you know, is that other, this other entity, is it going to have the same social security number as you have? Correct. Um, and, and things like that. So no, I, I wouldn't want to make uh, two of me and have two of me, you know, running around doing different things. I mean, that, that would, that would get awfully confusing. Now, of course, if, you know, and say, you know, 50 years from now, you know, if, uh, you know, when, when, when time is, is running out, um, well then that, that would be, you know, probably at some time then I'd say, okay, well, okay, this is, this is going to be the day, um, that, you know, it, when I die, this thing is going to take over and, and, and pick up, you know, and without missing a beat, um, to continue my existence. But no, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't do it before that. That would be, premature yeah and so th it, we have a set of problems here don't we if you do it before your natural life ends do you have to give up this life to turn on the android right are, are well, you they'll have to make a they'll, they'll have to make a law against there being two of you right i mean and I, seriously this is like a, a big issue and then the other part and again this goes down all the way to the atomic level and, and I'm going to bring antimatter right back into this conversation because antimatter is everywhere. And if, if, if uh, there are two personas, two, you know, you, you, you chose the one, right, persona, but let's just go with souls, consciousness. If there's two of you running around, are we now running into the danger of paradoxes? And things that aren't supposed to be in the future are now are now different because there's two of you, 
And do we start to implode at an antimatter, matter, confusing level of things that we just don't understand the consequences of what may ultimately happen here with uh, non-locality, with with uh, with quantum, with qubits, for example, that suddenly there's two of you that are running at the same time in this reality. Right. I don't. I mean. I mean. I think if 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 that were to happen, it would just be a very confusing situation. Um, you know, to have two of you out there. But I mean, I don't. I don't think that it's gonna. I don't know that that would involve any kind of non-locality or anything like that. It would just be. You know, you've built this robot, and it it has. It looks like you. It has your name, and it's. You know, I guess running around impersonating you, and. So that that would that would not be a, a a good situation. Now, what is so? What would be the next step here? Okay, so we've we've achieved the diodes, we've built the starships, uh, we've achieved uh, this uh, artificial uh, d- downloading uh, artificial beings of us. Um, it, would this be a way for us here on Earth to ultimately survive? Not only with the starships going to get hydrogen, but maybe just to be immortal and to live forever. What, you know, uh, is, is that the next step? I mean, would we have children? Would there be a need for children and so forth? Well, the, the the possibilities are are really en- endless from there. And and in fact, I mean, if you set your intent that you wanted to actually become a star yourself um, and be generating, you know, just huge power outputs, I mean, you 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 could do that. I mean, you you have enough time to do it, and um, I'm sure there's a way to build that that infrastructure around yourself so that you know billions of years from now. Uh, you have your own solar system, um, and and planets are orbiting you. I mean, it, it, again, you know, we're talking billions of years in the future, but uh, I mean, we're we're really only limited by our imaginations at that point. Anything that you can think up, you you could manifest that into being. Right, right now, uh, Sandia National Labs uh, and DARPA. Their main focus, the big chunk of their money, is focused on computers and 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 consciousness and being able to co- not only communicate with the computers but download us, right? Our dreams, our visions, our our actual selves, our id, and downloading everything onto disk and onto a hard drive. Is it because they know something? Are the Georgia Guidestones, are they hip to what's going on with the sun? And ultimately, they know that time is of the essence and we only have so much time to get this done and we need to do this now. Do you think that that's what's going on with with DARPA and Sandia? Oh, for sure. I mean, the the what what's happening here is is it's actually evolution. I mean, that that's uh, we're we we've all been programmed with that from the start. And I guess the the evolutionists would say that you know the the individuals that that have this um, inclination to survive uh, reproduce. And the ones that don't, you know, fall by the wayside. So we've gotten to this point now where where we have this this huge survival instinct, and the question becomes, okay, well, what are we, you know, how do we survive? And and I'm saying that if if we get into alignment with the sun and 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 have sympathy with the sun, empathy, and get onto that vector of being in alignment with it to to form more of a symbiotic relationship with the sun because right now we're just kind of consumers um, to, to move that relationship to, to one more of, of symbiosis. Uh, we're going to be a lot better off. Um, and, and there's not enough, and, and I don't know there's how much time there, there really is for us to get our cultural line of evolution um, uh, going in, in a more stable medium. Um, so that could be in, in, in at the, at the rate 
that that we're going here and the way things are going, I, I mean, it'd probably be better to, to to do that sooner rather than later. Um, well, and last week, so again, Elon, yeah, last week Elon Musk al- announced his next company is uh, the interface uh, between us and computers and getting the language developed and the hardware developed to get this direct communication going with <laughs> with a chipset. And it, it's an obvious, obvious focus on uh, the technical side of our uh, of our civilization. This is not a joke at this point. This is this is a stated goal. And when you get Elon Musk and other companies too, as well, on this case, uh, something is going to happen very quickly, isn't it? Right. Yeah. And and that that's the direction we're moving in. And and I think the the way it's going to progress is that we're going to we as humans will will integrate ourselves more and more with computers i mean we're pretty we're pretty well integrated now um i mean i know i've got my like cell phone with me all the time and you know my my laptop is around and 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 so we're continuing to to this march toward um becoming you know a a, a type of being that that is not uh, um, dependent on DNA, that that we're in a more stable medium, something that can be backed up. That that you know, if something, if you, if, if this android out there, um, if something happens to it, it it's going to have its memories, everything backed up. It'll be just a matter of, of of building another mechanical body and then downloading you know the software back into it. So you're going to have uh, an indefinite lifespan. And you know these transcenders, they're they're going to have our our language, our our mores, our beliefs, our value systems, our legal systems. The the whole um, you know set of rules is is going to stay stay the same for them, but they're they're just not going to have DNA in them. We now can download and store information on artificial DNA, right? The the one of the quest and goals right now in science is to. Uh, be able to do it on uh, biological DNA and start to, you know, talking about building computers where the memory is based on DNA. We're very, very close to doing this. Like I said, we can now, we can store information on artificial DNA. That's a frightening thought. With, uh, With the transcenders and with this Android system, would this be on uh, like uh, an uh, an artificial DNA because it's going to take a, a a massive amount of memory and capacity on this, or are we just looking at a traditional memory storage system uh, for the uh, for the persona? Well, I mean, I I think we'll work with whatever we have at, at the time, and you know, obviously, right now, you know, we. We have, you know, I guess these 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 kinds of chips that you're talking about are, are are coming out. So, I mean, I think whatever is whatever can process the the fastest is is what they'll be, you know, replicating, you know, our consciousness in, and and that just means, you know, getting it to, you know, react the, you know, to things and have the same kind of agenda that that you would have, and. I, I think we'll just use the, the the top technology that we have at the time, whether that be, you know, some kind of um, new kind of transistor that they come up with, or light transistors, or I mean, there's all kinds of different kind of technologies that I'm sure they'll advance us to. I'm gonna a couple of quick questions before we hit the break, and when we come back, we'll talk about uh, your new developments and your new game and 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 what that entails. That's. That's uh, going to be an interesting conversation when we have it. But first thing, uh, why do we sleep? Is this part of our proof of another reality out there? I mean, why do we sleep and see these other realities? Well, I, I, I guess when we sleep, it, it's sort of the the ego is is being turned off, um, and. 
I guess you can, and they say like for about 20% of the night, you're in a, in a dream state where your, your ego, I guess, can sort of observe things, but it's not really in, in, in control, um, unless you're having like a, a lucid dream. And, you know, as far as the, the reason why, um, you know, your ego needs to shut off, um, for that that period of time it's it's something built into us and you know it might be the case that when these these transcenders are are built and they're out there emulating you that you might want to have yours just kind of turn off you know power down for eight hours every day um i don't know i mean we'll, I mean, we'll have to see what what happens with that they may not for there might be some reason that that we we might find the answer to that that question you know, if these things try to continue, you know, running 24 seven, if they don't shut down and kind of power down for eight hours a day, um, you know, maybe they'll, they'll function better if they, they have that rest or something. I don't, that'll be interesting to see. One of the, uh, the other things that would happen if we move into this Android singularity type of existence is no more hospitals, Right. No more medical science. That's a huge chunk of there wouldn't because there's no need for cancer research is there if we're all living in a transgender body. Right. That's it. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess the the um, the 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 focus at that point would be on how to continue making improvements to um, this this android body like you know can have it be able to jump really high or play sports or you know play i, I play table tennis it'd be pretty cool to have it be able to play table tennis right but if you broke your android leg you're not going to go to the doctor you're just going to get a new leg right right but yeah i guess they'll have to have like android hospitals where you can come in and, and they, they <laughs> unbolt the, the old leg and put a new one on yeah yeah an android ambulance that would be hilarious. But yeah, I mean, all of these implications come into play, right? And they all do. And certainly the resources and everything else, I mean, that would be part of the appeal for a guy like, uh, look, look at Stephen Hawking, right? If he could get his brain out and just get it into a body that uh, where his physical self doesn't matter anymore, he would jump at the chance. If you are a guy like Bill Gates or Elon Musk and you can get the transistor, or transcender, transistor, the transcender Android body going on, then you're not worried anymore about illness, disease, a flesh eating disease, or, you know, some crazy thing like that. All of that is gone. And then all of the resources that we put, all of the manpower, and science that we put into medicine can now be focused into other areas. Uh, isn't that a benefit? Right. Yeah. That would. There's. There's going to be that benefit, and and an awful other. You know. There's going to be a lot of other benefits too. Um, to not have you know physical bodies that if we can, um, you know, transcend the dna and, and be in that state but i would say as far as for like those people it, it would sort of be like as an if for an individual it would sort of be like you know there would be that day uh where you go to sleep and do not wake up and and that's kind of it for you but this emulation of you at that point is is activated with with your legal identity and everything like that and that continues on but and and everybody thinks that it's you. Uh, well, they they would probably know, but uh, you know that it's going to continue to act the way you did and and do the things that you were doing and continue your, your job and your mission and everything like that. But as far as like you yourself, it's that experience is going to be like going to sleep and not waking up. Yeah, and the other part, we're going to take a break right here. Do you you know the famous quote? Do robots dream of electric sheep? Right, right, right. From so, Blade Runner. Yeah, from Blade Runner. Uh, it all comes into play. We'll be right back. Our guest tonight, Anil Pandey. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Mental God, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. 
KGRA Radio. Intelligent Talk. PatriotPrepared.com carries the leading brands of storable food from Numana, Legacy, and Heaven's Harvest. Patriot Prepared. Our name says it all. We're dedicated to empowering you to be self-reliant and confident in any circumstance. Whether you want to be prepared in the event of an emergency or you're an outdoor sports enthusiast, PatriotPrepared.com has prepackaged meals and kits for your entire family. Legacy, Heaven's Harvest, and Numana are known for high-quality, great-tasting GM free nutritious food with no chemical preservatives simple to prepare easy to store gluten-free and organic high quality nutrition options with a 25 year shelf life you can't beat the feeling of being food secure when you need it most so go to patriotprepared.com right now to pick up your supply of high quality storable food for your family because it makes good sense to be prepared that's patriotprepared.com so, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Would you like relief from muscle pain, headaches, and discomfort to sleep better, have more energy during the day, and just feel naturally amazing? Fibromalic can help. Its blend of malic acid and magnesium can provide pain relief and comfort for those who experience fibromyalgia. It helps your body absorb more oxygen, and it works quickly for a significant reduction in pain within 48 hours, all without a prescription. Ask for Fibromalic at Health and Vitamin Shops or shop Fibromalic.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Anil Pandey. We're talking about quantum simulation. Fascinating conversation tonight. And, uh, Anil, right before the break where we started to talk about uh, the, uh, you know, no more disease or anything else. But it it got me thinking uh, that what would we do? Would we literally be a 24-hour day civilization? You know, 24 hours a day on on a starship? Would there be a need for sleep? Would we ever just go, man, I'm tired of thinking. I've been thinking now for five years, right? What what do we do at, at that point? Yeah, I mean, I think at that point, we're probably going to, going to want to experiment that that if if we shut down for for eight hours is is there any benefit to doing that is, is there is there better functioning in some way um and and maybe we'll discover no we can you know in these new bodies we can just stay awake all the time i mean i i, I keep my computers running 24 7 all the time they seem to do best just being turned on all, all the time rather than being powered on and powered off. And then we we have the learning aspect, right? That's what we do. We learn every day. Don't put your hand on a hot stove, right? You do it once, you don't do it again. We learn, we read, 
we're learning. If we are in a 24-hour, you know, full-on curve like that, then we're getting really smart very quickly. And AI is getting, you know, so good now that it's learning exponentially. I mean, it's outpacing what we do as humans. So now how smart do we get as an Android? How quickly? And do we shut off that curve? Because we would end up ultimately becoming too smart, right? Right. And and, and I just had one thought on, on the sleeping for eight hours a day. What, what we, if in those bodies, it might turn out that we need to spend eight hours a day just indexing the, the, the memories from the day or, you know, maybe connected to the internet, but just not in a, in a state where you're running around interacting with other people that, that you're just kind of performing, you know, housekeeping functions or, um, analyzing memories or, or, or things like that. So it could, you know, you, you, there, there, there could be some kind of program, different state of consciousness that, that resembles more like sleep than, than just the, okay, what do I have to do right now to survive kind of consciousness? And then if, if they, the droids, you know, start to, uh, I mean, quickly go beyond what our brains are doing, right, in the physical self, then, and they are electronically connected, then are we dealing now with like a hive mind, neural networked, master dude that you you know what i mean and collectively the machines know that they are interconnected and wow right i i mean it's a it's it's a knowledge information and control explosion that i i think would en- end up happening very 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 quickly right yeah and i guess star trek has the borg you know where we're all kind of like integrated in into this this huge hive consciousness and 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 that is one thing that could um come about for sure yeah like the movie tron i you know i hate going back to hollywood uh uh you know looking at hollywood for this but th- th- it, it causes the imagination to to wander here and yeah, it would apply to just like the existence in the movie Tron. I, I, I totally, totally see that. Are we, because of all of this, if we are the simulation, are we a self evolving experiment here? Quite possibly. Uh we we that that's like the big mystery that, that we have going on here. It's like where did the matter in the universe come from? We don't really know. I mean they, they, they say the big bang, but where does that come from? Um so yeah, it it, it any anything like that's possible. Yeah, I the, the more that I know about the Big Bang, the less that I doubt that that's actually what happened. And if we go into the uh the many, you know, the the multiverse, then what we are suggesting here that mathematically that uh and I know that the the multiverse is uh uh quite possibly the way that things are, right? But does that mean that each one of them were created the exact same way through a big bang and mathematically everything just worked out to be the same in the end, right? It just doesn't make sense unless there was some type of master creator, some dude, you know, or, or woman <laughs> that has been around forever, literally forever and is, is creating things. And that's how we got here. Now that makes a lot more sense to me than chance than the big bang. Right, and and going back to the fact that that we're seeing all these the, the this phenomena like quantum entanglement and synchronicities and and all of that, it it's it suggests that that there there is um, another reality, a, a complex reality or a base reality that that contains our dimension, and you know the question is, can we you know how how do we interact with that? that other reality and that the communication, I think it, it comes through synchronicities through signs um, that, that you can see in, in everyday life. And, and if, as you 
um, are able to interpret those, you can become more in tune with, with this complex reality and, and whatever agenda it has for us. Now, I, I, I want to talk about your game, but before we do, um, one, one simple question here. For the other reality, whether we are the simulation or the other reality is the simulation, whichever one is, re- what is the proof that you have that that other reality exists? Well, the it, it would be the, the quantum entanglement, the non-local phenomena, things happening out of order in, in the, the space-time continuum through, you know, synchronicities and, and meaningful coincidences, all of that kind of, that, that all adds up to being proof that, that our space-time continuum has, has emerged from, from some other reality. And, you know, we, 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 we see evidence of it being there and, and the, the, that, that's really where the proof stands right now. Uh, the, uh, the point that you made earlier at the beginning of the show about uh, the sun being alive, the thing <clears throat> for me where we need to stop and maybe take a breath and look at what other ancient cultures were doing around the world um, they, they try to break it down in too simple of a, of, of a formula that the sun came up every day. It was light. It was dark at night. Everybody was scared. And in the morning, the sun saved everybody. Therefore, they looked at the sun as being a god and that the sun was growing plants and was giving life. And it was, you know, therefore a god. I, if what you are saying is is accurate and I'm right with you on it. Just maybe the ancients had a way to uh, connect with the sun and communicate with it. Maybe the sun communicated back and told them things that they never knew. And maybe a lot of information came from that communication and that communication we have lost over time. You know, because now we have toys, right? We have television, we have distractions, and, and we've lost that control or the ability to see the other side, to see another reality, to communicate, and that communication is gone. So we don't understand maybe what the ancients knew. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, I guess the the most prominent in in that um, <clears throat> analysis would be uh, Akhenaten, the the father of King Tut. You know that that was an Egyptian uh, pharaoh. That uh, he he kind of changed things up quite a bit to for and got everybody uh, really worshiping the sun and, and that, that, that was kind of his um, agenda. And uh, I think he ruled for about 17 years doing that. So yeah, that it, the, the history of the, of, of regarding the, the, the sun as a, as a deity goes back a long way. Yeah, absolutely. Akhenaten, that was his rise and his downfall actually. You know, at the day after he died, they went right back to what they were doing before. They wasted no time. <laughs> All the priests, they fired up the temples again. And, uh, you know, and the priests, you know, what's funny, I'm going to spend about 30 seconds on this. It was, it was a corporation, right? It was a giant countrywide corporation. The priests had their temples. They got, they collected all the food they were feeding, you know, whoever, you know what I mean? And they made money and they were wealthy and, and, and Akhenaten took all of that away. Right. (laughs) The second he died, they were like, okay, let's, uh, let's get this, uh, let's get this money machine going again. And uh, that's that's the way that I look at it. That's my 30 seconds. Okay, tell us about the game and and what is the goal of the game? Okay, yeah, it's it, it's currently under development. If you want to keep up with that, you can just follow Transcender Starship on Facebook would be a good way to keep up with it, what's going on. Otherwise, www.transcenderstarship.com. And the, the game is... Uh, something that that children could play it it's it's very simple um and what i guess you would call it a non local signal detector um and how it works is that that you and i would load 
the app that, that you would download onto your, your cell phone, for example, and uh, it would establish a socket, you know, between you and me and uh, the IP address. And uh, it's going to show you either a one or a zero at random, and it'll show me a one or a zero at random. And then we, we both have to determine whether we're looking at the same figure, uh, like as in we both have zeros or, and both have ones, or we have different ones. Like you have a zero and I have a one, or I have a one and you have a zero, and you'll hit same or different. And so you'll play that, say, 10 times, and then at the end it'll grade the, the, um, how you did. And uh, if, if you can determine, you know, what the other person has, the same or different than you, um, you know, say all 10 times, that, that's very that's statistically significant. Or, or, you know, you can, the more times you can do it in a, in a row without um, missing, the higher and higher the, the probabilities go. Um, so somebody that scores now, now you should score 50, 50 just by chance. It should just be a 50, 50 thing. That's right. But if you, if you have, if you can utilize some type of non-local method to access that information, then you can beat the probabilities. And that would be evidence that, that you're using either telepathy or telekinesis or ESP or some kind of, you know, power nor paranormal power, which of course would be non-local. Now you could take, I mean, obviously that same concept could be taken to many, 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 many different levels. And, and I totally get it playing it 10 times. You could do it a thousand, you could have a thousand level game, right? Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, and ones and zeros is one thing, but it could be anything, right? It could be anything. It, uh, the ones and zeros side of it would, uh, uh, prove the fifty-fifty situation, but it could be symbols. What about symbols? Um, right. That the, the symbols are are representing on and off, true and false, right, black or white, one or zero, and because that is a bit, and you know, unlike atoms, which you can keep on breaking them down smaller and smaller and smaller, that that is something that cannot be broken down. That is that's the smallest amount of information that can exist you you can't break it down any further than that either either it's on or it's off right right so, right right or, or well like i said it could be words uh on or off could be the words right black or white the symbols could be black squares and white squares right exact and that's what i'm referring right, to yeah, exactly. And you're all, all, all you're deciding, is, and and you know, I guess that that actually would be like a really good feature that you thought of uh, that that you could maybe upload two different symbols um, that are custom. Maybe ones that that if you're playing with somebody you know, um, something that you have in common that that if they're looking at one thing versus the other, that's going to generate a different response in them. And so maybe experiment. Bingo, with, bingo, with, a brother and sister. And they have pictures of their mom and dad, right? Exactly. Now, so neurally, yeah. neurally, or, uh, man, I hate to say paranormally, right? Something that we can't explain. But maybe that would uh, enable the advancement of the connect between the two. Right. Yeah, I, I, I should hire you to come up with the feature set. <laughs> <laughs> and and so now this is this is what is interesting here, and I can't believe that nobody has come up with this. And good luck with the game; it, it's going to be hugely successful, no doubt. And I know that you're very close to launching it, and and uh, and you're feverishly writing right now and finishing things up. But um, could this also be a training tool? Right. And do you anticipate the more that you play the game with the same person that the connect would grow stronger to eventually they could do 100 percent all the time? Right. Exactly. That it could, could be used as a as a training tool. And also uh, the, the great thing about it is that 
you know, children with, say, autism or some kind of, you know, learning difference or things like that, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, anecdotal evidence out there that, that autistics that have, you know, kind of purely unfocused awareness, um, they obviously, they can play the game because they can, you know, select the same or different. Um, that, that's a concept that, you know, it's, it's pretty basic there. And so you could have, you know, somebody with an IQ less than 40, you know, playing against people with, you know, a 200 IQ. Right, 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 or or somebody with the lower IQ. Uh, think about this with somebody with a higher IQ. The more that they play the game, you know, you can't explain these things. But what if their IQ started to increase? Like maybe they were getting the neural connections that were coming from the other end of the line, and that was starting to work in their brain. The next thing you know, things are cleared up. Somebody that had a stroke, maybe, right? Right. It, it it could work that way. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what the results are. Now, what, what is your uh, testing, uh, shown you so far with this? Um, how excited are you? Oh, very excited. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I've, there are, you know, when it comes to like the, you know, paranormal and things like that and the, the, the testing and, and all, um, there are a lot of people that have, you know, studied that and, and you know, done research, and, and it's all out there and peer-reviewed and everything like that. But, you know, the scientific community, you know, still tends to, to kind of poo-poo that and say, well, you know, it wasn't, you know, the, it wasn't a strict experimental, you know, situation. And, and so this is something where you know, rather than go by, well, these were my results and this is the result of the study, you get it and you try it and you prove it to yourself and, and the person that you're playing with. And, and that's going to be the best way to convince you rather than asking, you know, like going by some study or, you know, what your friend tells you or whatever. So it's it's kind of like a hands-on way to, to, to look at this. Is there a... Uh, uh... Is there the possibility of, uh, you know, it's I'm, I'm thinking more like a, a devil's advocate here, but, uh, you know, with somebody that is prone to seizures, right, and they're in a room with bright lights and they're playing a game like this, that they're connected with somebody that possibly things neurally could even go wrong. Is Is, is that out there? Uh, I guess anything could happen. Um, you know, if, if, um, if they're, so you're, you're saying like, if they're kind of like connected with this, this non-local field or whatever, right. that it, it could just kind of overwhelm them and, and cross circuit. Yes, yes, yes. And, <laughs> I, uh. and the, because that's exactly what we're dealing with here. I, I think it's a, a very exciting, uh, uh, idea. I mean, the, the, the possibilities here are endless. And then, you know, what if you, your results and you, you have, you know, the leaderboard and you have people posting their names and we've done a hundred games in a row and we're at 75% and me and my partner are getting better and better, you know, it's a team thing, um, that, uh, you're going to have skeptics come in and go, this is all BS, man. This is just all, they're they're lucky. There's it's impossible right, for this right, score. Yeah. yeah, that and and that that's why the the whole point of this is to to make it you know a, a available to to everyone to download themselves and prove it to them. them. So, I mean, you don't really because um, of course there's going to be skeptics when they 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 play this game. And we're the the, the tentative title for it right now is Blinkadoo. So if anyone's out there eventually searching for it, uh, um, Blinkadoo will be the the name of it, Um, B-L-I-N-K-A-D-O-O. And so you you just have to try it yourself. I would would just tell the skeptics, well, why don't you download a copy and and, and play it and and see how, how you do with it? And, you know, they might download it and get like, be able to get 10 out of 10 all the time i don't know and that then that would convince them i would think now um you know what what 
Go ahead. Yeah, but, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's very rude. Um, okay, well, what about this? The opposite, right? 50-50 should be the problem. I mean, you flip the coin. We all know, you know, 50-50 should be the What if you had a string of zeros, zero percent? You know, somebody just put, you, you know what I mean? Partners. Now, mm-hmm. does that indicate something? Yeah, if it was consistent, yeah, it would. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> um, what that would mean, but it would mean something that that they're just you know doing the opposite of what think, they're trying to do. You think about what I am suggesting here. It would still be neurally connected, atomically connected, but something preventing that, something preventing it. You know, and and mm-hmm. look, it, and you can't change. Uh, you know, nature is nature. Nature is nature. Timelines are timelines. And, you know, the old paradoxes with, uh, with time travel, right? You go back in time, you go to kill your dad. And every time you go to pull, you know, your grandfather, and every time you go to pull the trigger on the gun, something goes wrong. The gun jams. You get hit by a car, right? Something happens that your dad still, your grandfather still meets your grandmother at the movie theater and, and your parents are born, right? There's something that's always blocked. What if they're in this game that it was 0%, you know, in a row that nature is like trying to stop the, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I think the, the, uh, the ideas behind this are, are uh, really, really exciting. I mean, it's, it's just a great idea and a great concept. Right. And, and the thing about it is that, that, you know, we, we want to use the scientific method here. We want to break this down to as simple terms as we can and, and collect data and then analyze it. And then, uh, one, once we have that information to, to get to the bottom of, of what's going on here, you know, because if we can, uh, you know, readily observe, you know, non-locality in, in a game or whatever, um, that's going to create more of a, a, of a focus and on figuring out, you know, why is this happening? And, and, and I think it's going to ultimately lead to us saying, yep, we're in a simulation here. There's another dimension out here that is is you know interacting with us and we don't have um direct access to it but we can access it non-locally uh, through synchronicities you know through through those types of means and, and this is like the the first step when do you have a launch date uh hopefully it'll be out by the by the end of the month and, oh, uh, you're you're right there. You're right there. Okay. Um, uh, when the game launches, we got to get you back, and we're going to play it live on the show. Okay, that's what we're okay. going to do. And also, we could do the game with the audience live, couldn't we? I could connect with anybody. It doesn't matter, right? Right. Oh, I yeah, see. I see. They have a cell phone. Yeah, I see a full full show. Just dealing with this. And now, now, here's the other part. Just like CERN, and you and I were talking about this, CERN, you know, creating black holes and entrances into interdimensional areas and and, and so forth. And, 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 and that part of the science exploding, and they, they don't really know what they're doing, right? They're just colliding particles and, and, and hoping something. But what if this game, like, what, you know, opened up a portal, you know, between two people? You know, think about that. That's a, that's a crazy connection that you're trying to achieve. I cannot wait to play it. Anil, great conversation yeah. tonight, my friend. And uh, as you get closer to a launch date, you'll let us know so we can announce it here on the show. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you, Anil. Be safe out there. Keep us posted. And, and the Fader Knots really enjoyed the conversation tonight. Thank you so much, my friend. Great. Good night. Good night. Anil Pandey, everybody. What a great conversation. Think about that. Think about the implications. I, I think it's totally, totally, totally exciting. We have no idea. And should we play it live on the air, right? Wouldn't that be a great fader night? Me connected with all of you and to see how connected we really are. Think about that. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back. I'm going to open up the phone lines. 323-825-5045. Listen to.
to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies. I had gout in both my knees, and it's gone. Uh, well, I'm pretty stupid. I should have ordered it, like, you know, 15 years ago. Best really? thing I ever got in my... It's, it's the most effective product that I've ever bought in my life. He had eczema on his hand, and it cracked and it cracked for years. Mm -hmm. He did anything from doctor, every cream, everything. And three months on the veggies and fruit, it was gone. They're just awesome. They keep asking me, what am I doing? I told them what I did with my cholesterol. I had the blood test, right? And it went down 100 points. 262, now it's 162. Everything is just perfect. Call now to find out how to get your free month's supply of Balance of Nature. Call 800-2468-751. That's 800-2468-751. Call now, 800-2468-751. Or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code TSL. Would odors, mold, and mildew describe your basement or crawl space? It doesn't have to be that way. Transform them into a fresh, healthy, usable one with the technologically advanced Wave Moisture Control Units. The computerized operation maximizes moisture control and also expels harmful radon, combustion gases, and numerous other pollutants. Dehumidifiers are old technology that do nothing for air quality and waste energy. Wave units are intelligent, self-monitoring, do not need maintenance, and will save you hundreds in electricity. Wave units are still running effectively effectively over 15 years. They've been tested and installed in public and military housing and by property managers nationwide. Buy a unit now and if your home is not fresher and drier, you can return it for a full refund for up to 12 months. What have you got to lose? Call now. 1-888-618-WAVE. 1-888-618-WAVE. Or visit MyDryHome.com. That's MyDryHome.com. Home Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full range boom boxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this, it's amazing. It's just 129 bucks and use the promo code JCRTWS and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple, just go to jimmychurchradio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back Lee Tappy. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. All right, welcome back. Yeah, we got some issues here with the commercials. I don't know what's going on. Fade to black. I mean, it's Jimmy Church. I don't know what's going on. The commercials are cutting in and out. But I know that I sound fine. It's just the commercials. So there you go. Great conversation. 323-825-5045. And uh, oh, let me grab one of these calls coming in. All right, hi. You're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Maria. Hi, Maria. How are you? Really good. I really love that interview. Um, it really opened up a whole other area of of taking kind of that, I want to call it connection or that tele, uh, telepathy connection and putting a computer twist to it. Um, but I, I'm really excited to see what kind of programming game this guy comes up with because I really want to see how it goes. Because I really, because I'm just handling with um, a, a of mine, and we've been doing it for quite some time. And 
we've been doing it for a couple of years now. And what I've found is we have so many synchronicities now between the two of us. Right. Uh, through our life, through um, just, you know, even our family. Um, I can tell when something's going to happen with her. She can always, you know, read me, you know, from a distance. Um, it, it's, and so it, it's gotten stronger over the years. So I'm wondering if this is going to kind of open the same channel for other people who, who try to do it. I mean, this is just going to be like another app on your phone and, and, uh, and help with that. I mean, I, I found it really fascinating. Yeah, well, see, yeah, this, I, this is the thing. And, Maria, you're absolutely right. We all, and, and, and Neil said this at the beginning, and he's right. We've all had... Those experiences, right? Some, you're thinking of your friend Lisa. You haven't thought of her in 10 years. You haven't talked to her in 11, and the phone rings, right? And you pick it up, and you're like, holy crap, I was just thinking about you. Well, how many times have you said that in your life, right? That is a trippy— But you, that's but a, you know what, though? But with that, though, it's those people that you have that connection is because you're, like, familiar with their vibration. You're familiar. Right. You have already no a doubt. connection with them. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. I have a friend. He's probably listening right now. His name is Jim. Jim McCallister out of uh, Indianapolis. And uh, old buddy of mine. And I swear, I am not kidding. I will be just whatever. And he has his, it, you know, it, his name pops in my head. And my phone rings. And it's crazy. I can't even tell. It's happened hundreds of times. I've given up on that, right? It's just, it's just whatever. But, but you're absolutely right. It's somebody that you're connected with. But scientifically, we haven't applied it. And what if Anil is right on the thought of uh, electronics, the Internet, neurally, atomically uh, connecting? I, with- I think we just haven't given it the right names. I don't think we've just. I mean, we still haven't integrated that whole other side with the technology side, and and you know because we still want to keep it very separate because you know of course we would never you know, there's no you know relation. I mean, of course that's how you know I guess you know they want to think of it, but it's all connected. So we just haven't named it. We still haven't given it a name. We haven't. I mean, maybe ten years from now it'll have a new name, something that we we've done with, but we just haven't named it yet. But it's there. And those connections come from people we've already connected with, good or bad. I, I really believe that even if you have a negative connection with somebody, you know, you, 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 you know, you know, when I have an argument with someone and, and it's someone that I don't get along with, um, somehow I can always tell when that person's going to come up. Well, and, and do you think that the Internet, because now we are all connected, right, and we're all carrying cell phones, we're all on that Wi-Fi, we're all, you know, do you think that the Internet, because we're so connected now globally, do you think it's starting to connect us when we didn't think we had those connections before? I think people are becoming more aware and I think we're kind of in that infancy of um, we're dumping everything we can on the Internet right now because uh, we don't know how do you really utilize the Internet. Uh, but we're, I think we're going to get better at it. I think that the more we're with this school, the more we realize that we're, we're more connected um, and, and that, than we thought, uh, that we're closer. Um, you know, that's just a good question. Um, I really think that, gosh, I don't know. It, 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 oh, are you going to, you're going to, you're going to get the game, right? Oh, I'm so going to get, I really want to see what this is about. I, I totally. Do you know who, <laughs> do you know who you're going to play it with? I know exactly who I'm going to play it with. <laughs> Are you, you've got to call in. You've got to call in. Um, and I, I'm, you know, I'm going to download it and I'm going to play with all the fader knots. I think that would be an awesome thing to do uh, because of the technology that we have here with this show and the connectedness that we have with our family that listens to this show. 
and to be able to think about this. We have a video camera, right, that's live in the studio. We have microphones that are going out. We have Twitter, so everybody else can tell me exactly what's going on on their end. And everybody's going to see us playing. How more connected can we be for an experiment than that, right? I mean, it, it, that sounds like a ton of fun. I think it is it is fun. And now you're just taking it to the screen. You are now... You've got the electrical connection. Now you're going to create a more of a, I, and, I hate, and this is for lack of a better word, like the spiritual, the more psychic connection where when we're not on the phone, when we're not listening to your show, we're somehow, we're going to think of each other. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, you need, so you're taking it to one more step above twitter <laughs> it's not twitter we're not actually looking at the device it's going to take it to a different level i think that's the level we're we're missing with the internet yes we're connected we're we're, we're reading we're, we're we're alive we're we're here but when we're not connected to a device what's that next step it's it's this it's this where we're going to start using that muscle collectively collectively and it, and that's going to open up another you call it a portal yeah it is a portal it's, it's, a, right. it's either a portal you can call it a cord you can call it a whatever term you want to use it because there's a whole bunch of them in, the, in this field you know as you know uh, but yeah i think you do you start to connect and you just connect one cord you start to connect a lot of them and, and i think that's where this Go ahead. Totally. And I'll tell you something else, which is uh, pretty trippy. If we start to, like Anil is developing this type of technology for a game, the uh, the evolutionary steps that the other video games that could be developed that are neurally connected, that you're in, in a paranormal sense, right, in a telekinetic sense, the the sky's the limit, isn't it? It's it's pretty exciting to have him on the show, and and talk about this in a in a in a in a game concept that nobody has really ever thought of before. One, but two, this show gets it. We get exactly what he's trying to do here. Oh, right? I was flipping out when I was listening to this. I'm like, oh my god, this guy needs needs to be needs to be heard <laughs> on a broader scale. But uh, you know, I don't know. It just, I was like, wow, I I can see where this can go. I could see where, knowing what I know based on what I do, this and and being so close to Silicon Valley, I, you know, I thought, oh my god, you just like merged two worlds. <laughs> So um, we'll see. I really, I'm really excited to see what what's going to come. What this this thing is. I want to see. I want to see what the steps he's taking. I want to see what he's using to develop this so-called you know, this muscle between the two pe- to two people, and and how you know and how easy. And I'm really curious to see when you put it on the show how easy it is. How easy it would be. How difficult it would be for people to connect. And then you'll see who is really connected and who isn't. Yeah, you know, who, uh, and thank you, Maria, for the phone call. You know who I would like to play? Michael Shermer, right? The the oh the skeptic, right? Get him on the show so I can hear him go, ah, whatever. There's nothing going on here. All right, I'll talk That's to you. That's awesome. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much for the, thank yeah. you so much for taking the call. Yeah, thank Bye. you, Maria. What a great phone call. Yeah, isn't this exciting? And I would like to know who out there is uh, ex- as excited about this as I am. I think it's great, and we'll be able to actually think about this. Is playing the game? There isn't a more connected show to its audience than Fade to Black. It doesn't exist. It just doesn't. And and I'm referring to what goes on with our chat rooms and and Twitter, our family, the connectedness that we all have with each other. Right? We're all brothers and sisters here. And to get a game like this going, holy crap. Right? And we'll find out. We'll find out which two fader knots are the most connected. Yeah. It, you know, from what if it's like Mark Tarana and, and Maria from Sweden? <laughs> you know, but those two will connect. 
but, but you know what I mean? Uh, from opposite parts of the world, you know, and, and funneling that connectivity through fade to black. Wow. Totally, 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 totally excited. This is, uh, this is, uh, wow. Just mind blowing. All right. Uh, you know, phone lines are open. I'll keep them open. Are you guys as, as excited about this or not? Anil Pandey, what a great guest. And he laid it out all correctly, if you think about it. To start with the fundamentals here with the sun, some of the things on our own planet that are talking to us, and one certainly being the Georgia Guidestones, and and what is going on here. And if there is another mass ejection or, or something else from the sun, and it hasn't happened for 150 years, thank goodness. But if, if that happened and we are not prepared here, which we are not today. If it happened today, right, we would be back in the dark ages. Dark ages. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how big your house is, or how deep the bunker is. It And none of that's going to come into play. Because overnight, food distribution, done. Communication, over with. The rich and famous, those they have the same cell phones that you do. Right? The same cars. Everything is parked. Everything is done. Think about that. Think about that. Everybody is on an equal playing field. Except for the ones that have a self-sustaining farm in Montana, which is where we would all be going. Think about that. It's a pretty trippy thought. And uh, laying it all out, man, uh, all the way through consciousness and uh, uh, persona being downloaded and onto an Android, there's no doubt that that is the future of things. I've talked about this so many times on the show. The only way to get to the stars with us is if we are there uh, electronically. And I, I've said it, man. You're, you you jump on the Starship, man. You turn, you plug in the USB drive. You're now downloaded. You turn yourself off, and you're living in Tron. And that's what's going to happen. That's that's the only way to get it done. You know, uh, freeze frame my body. I guess right. <laughs> Think of, oh man, has anybody seen the movie Passengers? Has anybody seen the movie Passengers? Check that out. Um, watch the movie. But I'll say this. Um, big, <clears throat> big flaw. The movie itself could have been as great as 2001. It could have been as great as Silent Running, right? It, it could have been right there. They missed the mark in the storytelling. But the concept and the idea behind it, pretty, pretty dang fascinating. Pretty cool, pretty cool movie. But it also goes back and, and applies to directly what this show was about tonight. All right, before I get out of here, a couple of things. Check this out. A letter from Einstein to a physics teacher that was written back in 1953 fetched $53,503.75 at auction last week. Now... Seems cheap to me. But anyway, the letter was to Arthur L. Converse from Malcolm, Iowa. It was sold by Nate D. Sanders Auctions. And bidding started at $15,000 on March 30th. Now, today is April 5th. And this is according to, uh, to a statement from the auction house. A spokesman for Sanders Auctions, Sam Heller, said that the letter had been in the Converse family's possession for many years. The auction did not reveal the buyer's identity, oddly enough. The letter, whose envelope indicated it was sent from room 115, Lazarium, element 115, of the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey, on September 7th, seems to answer questions about Einstein's theory of relativity and how to reconcile the theory with experiments. Converse was a science teacher and sent Einstein a questionnaire regarding experiments with electroscopes, which are charge me measuring instruments. But I got to say, $53,000 for if, if I had the spare change, right, if I, if I, I, I would have bought it, $53,000. Seems really, really cheap, doesn't it? Especially when you think about, 
today, well, it happened a couple of days ago. The most expensive diamond, I just read about this. The most expensive diamond has been now sold in the world. And I forget what it was, $70 million or whatever. It's 59 carats, a pink diamond. And I'm thinking to myself, why, who out there, seriously, who out there has so much money that they would waste it on a rock, a diamond? Who, who would do that? But yet a letter from Einstein only sells for $53,000. What is more valuable to somebody, to us, to human beings, to earthlings, <laughs> a frigging pink diamond for $70 million, $70 million. You know how many elementary schools you could build? How many streets you could repair? How many people you could feed? $70 million. But yet Einstein's letter goes for fifty-three grand. Yeah, somewhere along the line, I just think that our, our values have gone way off kilter. And now I've got a pretty crazy story here. A, a UFO researcher, enthusiast, has mysteriously vanished last week. And this happened in Brazil. He left behind a den, a den, a room, plastered wall to wall with Illuminati codes and symbols. His name, Bruno Borges. He was 24 years old, disappeared from his home in Rio Branco in the west uh, side of Brazil, having spent much of the last month working on what was being described as a secret project his bedroom they call it a den but his bedroom was free of furniture no furniture police found a 2000 uh pound uh, uh uh um dollar wise uh let's call it $3000 statue of a 16th century philosopher you know the one giordano bruno who predicted alien life they also found 14 encrypted books and signs associated with the Illuminati and they were spread out over everything and all over the floor his father his father says and I'm quoting here we tried to call him on his cell phone but it's off he's never gone before he did not take anything with him and the last time we saw him was when he was leaving home he just walked out the front door when his um, his parents had left, they were gone on a 30-day vacation. And when they left, his bedroom was said to be normal. But 25 days later, when they returned, they were covered with this coded writing, the walls, symbols, as well as those 14 secret manuscripts, each with a different Roman numeral on the cover. Now, we don't know. The investigation is ongoing. The police are looking for him. He has just disappeared and left this room full of secrets. Right? Dum, dum, dum. I hope he's all right. But, man, I want to know what the 14 books are. I want to know what the symbology is, is uh, that was going on there. And the secret investigation that he was on to, we need to know what it all was. Right? But we can't because he's gone. Hope he, I, I'm serious. I hope he's safe when we find out uh, uh, the, uh, the big mystery here. Jan Polonik. That's his name. Well, he was a... <clears throat> not Krispy Kreme. He was a Dunkin' Donuts customer. Yep. Based in Worcester, Massachusetts. He went to a local shop and asked for a bagel with butter. It turned out he was given a butter substitute. Well, he wasn't happy. So he did what all good Americans do. He sued. <laughs> now check this out. Polonic sued 23 Dunkin' Donuts franchises in Massachusetts. And now he has reportedly settled with Dunkin' Donuts though the paperwork has yet to be approved. And the settlement is pretty cool if you live in Massachusetts. If the deal goes through 
As many as 1,400 people can get up to three buttered muffins, bagels, or baked goods with the real stuff. Real butter. No substitutes allowed. Those people have to go to one of the 23 specified Dunkin' Donuts location in Grafton and Lemonster. Lemonster, right? The Monster Quest. <laughs> Monster Land. Lemonster. Yeah. The Bridgewater Triangle area. Lowell, Millbury, Strewsbury, Westboro, and Worcester. And all of those stores will be required to use only butter for one year. And after that, they have to disclose whether they are using a substitute. And <laughs> some things, my friends, you just can't make this stuff up, can you? You just can't do it. All right, I'm going to leave you with this. The United Launch Alliance, the ULA, some things you can't make up, has installed a 1,350-foot-long zip line on its Atlas V launch pad in Florida. But the company hopes that the new system will never have to be used. What is it there for? Check it out. It's their lifeline. It's the escape route. Rather than joy rides, this zip line is intended to give astronauts a super fast way to escape from the capsule if there's a problem on the launch pad during a launch pad emergency. The system is similar to uh, the slide wire baskets that NASA once used for the space shuttle crews. Do you remember that? ULA thought about this a lot, and they considered many different options, including they had uh, tracks, tracks with a gondola, like a, a ski lift, right? They had that idea. Um, they uh, they thought about, uh, uh, well, anyway, uh, some of them are too whack here, and I'm going off of memory. But they ended up deciding on the zipline system, but they had to find somebody to build it. So they found this company, Terra Nova. So I went and checked out Terra Nova today. They designed some of the, the gnarliest and most challenging recreational zip lines around the world. And one of them is an 8,350-foot ride that they created over a cop, uh, Copper Canyon in Chihuahua, Mexico. And it turns out that 8,350-foot zip line ride for fun is the world's longest. So that is who our astronauts are going to depend on at the uh, at the launch pad in Florida. How cool is that? Now, they're going to be testing it very, very, very soon. And I got to say, if you're in the astronaut program, you know, you've got different things that you're going to be doing all month long. But you're going to be looking forward to the zip line emergency egress. <laughs> this is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. And I can tell now that I've even got faulty cue music to get out of here tonight. Ah, you got to love it. Fade to Black's executive executive producer is Rita Kamarian. Show is produced by Hilton J. Paul, Mark T. Kovar, LJ3, Renee Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Bateau, and Mark D. Kovar. Fady by Dale. Webmaster is Drew, the geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and syndication is KGRA, the planet. Thank you to Anil Pandey tonight. Fantastic conversation. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2017 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night, Fader night. John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom. Until then, everybody follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Everybody be safe. Go Beckley Tepe.